Hello friends, here we go. Let's move this down here. Hi everyone. 
All right, let's see. Who do we have in chat so far? I feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't think I'm forgetting something. I'm telling you, I have been off my game this week, which let me start with before I do all the hellos. I'm so sorry I had to cancel Monday. Um, it has been an interesting long week for me. Uh, one, I've been trying to figure out uh, my headaches lately, but I had an appointment with my doctor and I think we have something new. But I didn't want you guys to think that I just bailed on you for no reason. It was just me trying to figure out stuff. But um, anyway, I'm here and woohoo. So let's see, let's start from the beginning here. Hi, Kenny. <laughs> April, I was the first like. Hi, April. Melissa, hello. Cindy, hello. Hello, Jay. Let's see. Ch -ch Molly, hello. Ch -ch 9 25 p.m. in Roseville, Michigan. Yeah, it is 8 31 here. So you're like an hour ahead of me. Um, let's see. Hi, Kat. Ooh, we're going to show off some things that the lovely, lovely Kat sent me this week. It was so cool to get those in the mail. Hi, Michelle. Let's see. Miranda. Hello. Let's see. Mary. Hello, Mary. Jay. Oh, you just finished seven pages. Oh, nice, Jay. Whew, in three days. You must have a sore arm. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Della, hello. Tommy, be lurking. Sounds good. Brenda, hello. Let's see, I want to make sure I don't miss anyone. Hi, Alex. Hi, Miranda. Unless, wait, did I already say hi to Miranda? Anyway, if I did, you get two highs. <laughs> let's see. Tracy, hello. Pat, hello. Let's see. <laughs> hello, Emily, Steve, and Steve. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, let's see, Mona, Tanya, hello, hello, make sure I'm not missing anyone, I think I got everyone, you didn't give me a warning, well see that's the thing uh, Kat is, uh, we go and check the P.O. box, and so um, Steve was headed out, I was like, why don't you just go go check the P.O. box while you're out, and he's like, okay, I checked, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's something in there, so I was super, super excited, um, which is why, if for some reason uh, you ever send anything and I don't respond right, right away, it's probably because we haven't gone to check the P.O. box yet. So, hi, devs. 2.30 a.m. here. I realize we may be the only ones who get the job. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah. we're First off, we're coloring this page tonight. Hi, Allie. Um, I finished because... So, my plan... Whoop, I hit the mic. <laughs> my plan was to finish the teacups on Monday so that we could start this page today. But since I canceled, I went ahead and finished the teacups on my own and I posted the picture. I mean, we've I hit the mic again, good Lord. Um, be prepared for next week, <laughs> okay. Um, hi, no let's see, I always wanna say Nani, but I know it's not Nani, it's Noni, it's Noni. <laughs> um, anyway, so I posted the picture, I mean, we colored, uh, we colored most of the teacups anyway, so, I mean, if you were following along, um, you know, it's shown how to color the teacups. But anyway, so I finished those off today, actually. Aw, oh, sounds good, Loretta. Rest up. Um, so I finished them up today. I posted it on Instagram. Um, I don't know. I think I posted it in the community on YouTube. I'm not sure. And I think I posted it on Facebook. Um, but anyway, it's all done. She's got all of her little teacups colored, but I wanted to make sure we were able to start... Um, Hi, Sherry. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that we could start a fresh page here on Friday because um, next weekend, I know I talked a little bit, like maybe we would do the gold thing theme this weekend, but we've got so many colorathons this month and um, with me still trying to figure out some headache stuff, um, I don't want to push it. So um, we are going to uh, wait on that gold one because next weekend, we have um, the, let's see, it is, yeah, September 18th is the Spooktober Colorathon. Um, and I have, there are, there are some videos for it. I know Vicky's posted it. I know Belinda has uh, put the video on her, you know, when she streamed. I just haven't had a chance to do it yet. But that is going to be this weekend. If you want to see the schedule, I think I have it up as exclamation point spooktober or exclamation point schedule what did i put that as and that should give you the links to everybody's um everybody's streams that are going to be doing it let's see no it's not exclamation point schedule what did i put that as oh you know what it might be the oh no wait 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 i'm confused 
Victorian colorathon is next weekend. Sorry, not Spooktober. I I'm telling you, my brain is totally fuzzy. Victorian color that. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Yep, there it is. I I, I caught on. I'm looking at it and I'm like, hmm, wait a minute. This doesn't seem right. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Kat. It just I'm my brain. My brain, my brain, my brain. Uh let's see. Exclamation point Victorian. That's next weekend. Sorry. I was looking at all the Spooktober stuff before stream and I got confused. So yeah, don't listen to me. I'm a crazy lady. Uh <laughs> Okay, so the 18th. Yes, thank you, Kat. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Melissa. Yeah, see, everybody's just coming in now. Yeah, sorry, I was mistaken. Uh, 18th through the 20th is the Victorian Colorathon. You can uh, type exclamation point Victorian for that schedule. Because, see, I have it on my wall here, so I'm, like, looking at it. I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, right there, Miranda, as soon as that pops up, right there, Nightbot's got the link for that. Um... But yeah, so it's the Victorian Colorathon next weekend, and then, uh, like, like Kat said, is the first weekend of October is the Spooktober one. So anyway, needless to say, we have more than enough stuff that's going on. Um, and then those uh, pages for the Victorian Colorathon, I colored a bunch of dresses. In fact, I think I still have it here. So let's see. These are the streamers. They're going to be streaming for the Victorian Colorathon. Uh, like I said, this is next weekend. Um, you have neon pink posties on my calendar for those two. I should probably do that. I mean, I print out the calendar, but I should just put a big calendar right here on my wall. Um, so these are the streamers that are going to be for the Victorian Colorathon. And then this is this here. So what I have for it is I have a new sticker and we have a bunch of new pages for it. So I've got three bundles plus a page with hats that go with the dresses. Um, and this is all in my Etsy store. Yes, Kat, I saw you got those. Sweet girl. Um, but yeah, so these are everything I have for the Victorian color thong. Now, it's obviously not just color the dresses. No, if you have a Victorian book or you have a Victorian page you want to color, go for that. It's, this is just something that I was working on for a while and we're like, hey, this would work great for the Victorian color thon So um, you can find all of those over at Etsy as well as this page we're coloring today. This is uh, over in my Etsy store as well. So exclamation point Etsy for that. Exclamation point Etsy. There we go. Exclamation point Etsy for that. Um, and you can find all of those there. Plus, um, the link for this one is in the description below as well. So, um, feel free to take a look at that. We are going to use the Lyra Rembrandt Poly Colors today. Oh, Kat. Thank you, Kat. You are so sweet. You don't have to. You're so sweet. Can we get some hypes in chat for Cat? Let's see. As soon as it loads, you can type exclamation point hyper. If you remember, you can use the little uh, hype emotes. Here we go. Mine loaded. Here we go. My chat is always so slow through. Here. There we go. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're amazing. I'm throwing some kitty hearts in this one. You are absolutely lovely, Kat. Thank you so much. Speaking of Kat, because she's so amazing. Uh, so a couple of things she sent me I was super excited about. One, I finally got some of the Nina paper that everybody's been talking about. So uh, these are actually pr uh, printed on the... Um, uh, oh, <laughs> thanks, Kat. Uh, these are printed on the Nina paper, so I'm super excited to try them. Um, I have another cardstock that I use, but this one feels like it's got a little bit more tooth to it, which I'm excited about. Um, yeah, no worries, Kenny, uh, which I'm excited about. So this one, the Nina paper link uh, is in the description below, um, as well as you can type in exclamation point Nina, and that will... Ooh, if I could spell, that'll give you the link for it as well. Um, same thing with the Lyra Rembrandts. You can type exclamation point Lyra, and the link for it is in the description below. But the other thing that she sent me was da -da -da, this amazing case. I can't really lift this up anymore. So, But what I did is, so my Prismacolors have been a mess for a while because I have some duplicates of others, others I'm completely out of, and I've, it's been a while since I've kind of taken stock and reorganized. So I have drawers for my Prismacolors. Um, but what, my, what I have is a lot of short nibs that I tend to default not to use, but they're not small enough for me to justify throwing away yet. 
And so I would like use the longer ones just because it's more comfortable. And so I'd have all these smaller ones. So I'm forcing myself to go through the smaller ones first and then I'll do that. So what I did is I went through and reorganized and I've got, see, you can see they're all like super small, but not so small that they're not usable in, a, in an extender, you know? So I reorganized all of my Prismacolors. Yeah, we're on the right page. Um, and so I have all the shorter ones in here. And then what I did is the extras because a couple years ago they had an amazing sale on Prismacolors and I got myself a second set so that I would have uh, backups. So I've got these pastel storage drawers. And so what I did is I've got my backups all organized now. Now the OCD in me is like so super excited to see all these colors lined up. And I have a few, you know, short ones that I used over time, but like I am almost completely out of whites. I have like no uh, like yellow chartreuse. There's a few colors I'm out of. A lot of blues and greens I need to get. Oh, awesome, Michelle. So I need to, uh, yes, reorganization. On one of the days I wasn't feeling as great and I just didn't want to do a whole lot. I just sat in bed, spread everything out on the bed and just reorganized everything. So I've got a messy piece of paper around here somewhere where I took stock of what I had and then wrote down all of the, all of the singles that I need to get. So like a while back, I stocked up on Dahlia Purple because uh, where I get it, you know, they were all out. But it's interesting because these Dahlia Purples um, are the barrel one, or I guess they're Sanford, but they're the older ones, and you can tell that because of the printing on it. Let's see if I can lighten this up and get it in focus here. There you go. Okay, so you can see it's got this gold on it versus something like this. Use the shaky hands. Uh, but you can see silver versus gold. The font is different, um, and that is uh, very indicative of... Um, Love seeing the old school pencils? Yes, yes, that's exactly it. I have a treat here at the end. I, I've, I've shown them to you guys before, but they're like my pride and joy. But it's just cool to see them all lined up in color order. I'm not kidding, I can't tell you how many hours it took me to finally get these all sorted. Hi, Groon. Yes, Boots, me too. So the funny thing is too, is this, the cobalt blue hue was also like running out of stock. So like I had stocked up then, and this is when I used Prismacolors all the time. And anybody who uses Prismacolors know that because they're so soft, it is really easy to just blast through a pencil. Three complete set of Prismas plus backups, exactly, yeah. So it's so easy to go through these. I, I hate just having one of a pencil. Otherwise, like I have, like barely any pink deco, I think parrot green, like another one. Like I said, I made a list finally. But things like sky blue light, um, pale sage, those are some of my favorites. I like to have a nice light color. So then there's this one. So this is four drawers now. Let's see, let's get that in focus. There we go. Hi, Robin. <laughs> Shannon. Uh, so now we're into the browns and then almost done. This is drawer number five. Now this color here, this is a discontinued one and you can see it's got the older, older printer. So like discontinued meaning like they don't make this color anymore. And this is deco orange. It's really similar to salmon. Other prints with colors, but not a complete set. I have the scholars, the regular ones. I have doubles and triples, but it was given to me. Oh, awesome, Michelle. Yes, lime peel is also great. Um, but there was a little mom and pop shop in Colorado that I was able to find and call and they sent me out these extras that they have. Oh, awesome boots, deco orange. Yes, I love deco orange. And then here starts my really disorganized luminance. Uh, but what I have also that I got from that shop is I have a bunch of the barrel steel color. Are you going to post time for each marathon? Yes. Yeah, I will. I have a bunch of stuff to share because um, there's a bunch of new info that's out and promo videos and everything for Spooktober. And then I will reshare all the information for the Victorian Colorathon next weekend in the group as well. Uh, here, let's get that in focus. So I've got the steel ones. I only sharpened the metallics of ones I have duplicates of, but there's like metallic maroon, metallic purple, metallic rose, uh, metallic violet. I find that that's interesting that there's metallic purple and metallic violet. Deco aqua. I know. I wish I had that one, Allie. It is probably so gorgeous. I would use it so much. 
Um, metallic blue, and then metallic jade, metallic green. So I have a few of those. But um, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, so Boots, when they said they had it, I, I talked to Steve and I was like, look, I'm not going to find these anywhere else, like at all. So uh, I just took advantage of it while I could and said, hey, go ahead and box them up. And this was three years ago maybe it was it was a while ago but i was able to get them boxed up and i paid for it over the phone like it was just yeah i was just thrilled to find it so i don't use them much i'll be i'll be sad when i'm all out of the deco orange but it's just a little bit lighter than salmon um so you know it's it's doable but i do really enjoy that color i wish i could get my hands on a huge stock of uh deco aqua but, um, yeah, the dream, that's the dream. I saw that, uh, color with Claire was trying to get the stock of charisma colors. Now, if you want to talk hard to get, like I, that is, that is a pretty impressive feat she has undertaken. Um, okay. So we have the Nina, the Nina paper, we have the pencil case and also these, I haven't opened these yet. I wanted to wait and open up with them, but they are the Pentel sparkle pop gel pens and it says that it changes color on dark or light paper. So we're gonna set these aside. Look at them before they switch production to Mexico and discontinue colors. Yes, Boots, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. So what I have here are two small, let's see, this one's black. That one's toned tan, but I do have, let's see, where did I put that white piece? Here it is. Okay, so I have white. Sparkle Pop, yes! I have white and I have black. See, I used this before as a test sheet, so we're just gonna continue to use this as a test sheet. Okay. We'll just flip it over though so it's fresh. All right, so let's go ahead and open these up. I wanted to save them to do them with you guys. Oh, Lord! <laughs> See, I don't just drop pencils, I drop pens too. There's, there's, you know, equality for all, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah, sorry if I missed anyone coming in. I apologize, but welcome, welcome, everyone. Okay, so it comes with... Oof, let me grab this real quick. Let's see. Um, all right, so they are one millimeter as far as uh, pen width, and there's eight pens in here. So you have, looks like your gold, your silver, purple, pink, Sparkle Pop is the U.S. version of Pentel Duo Hybrid. Oh, okay. Oh, you have, Allie? How does she like them? And we have orange. We have black. You know, it says it shows up differently on black, but I've got a... You would think that black on black would just be sparkly. Um, okay, and then we have green and we have blue. Okay, so we're going to do these on white first. She loves them. Awesome. I know I, they've been on the wish list for a while and Kat was just so lovely. And now I'm like, ooh try them okay so I'll adjust the focus uh, on here if I need to here in a second what's the name of them oh and I didn't put a link for these ones but they are the Pentel art sparkle pop um, they call them the sparkling iridescent metallic gel pens so yeah they should be fun I'm gonna get a drink of water real quick okay so let's just start down the line real quick We've got gold. Ooh, that is shimmery. All right, I'm gonna zoom this in here so you can see. And then we're gonna make sure that we're in focus. So I guess that's about as good as it's gonna get. All right, so we'll do it a little bit bigger here. That's a lot of shimmer. That's really pretty. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, this might rival the uh, Arteza glitter. <laughs> I'm not complaining, Kat, and I told Steve there is a surprise coming for him, and he got all bashful. He's very curious. He's very curious. The Duo Hybrid are two colors in one pin. Oh, interesting, Boots. Yeah, Allie, these are really sparkly. When we're done, I'll see how close I can get so you can see how sparkly it is. Okay, this is the silver. That's pretty good. Okay, this is the purple. Hmm. The spark oh wait, that's interesting. There's like it's purple, but the spark
sparkle in it is blue. I was going to say it doesn't show up that well, but it's like it's blue sparkle in it. Hi, Steve. Hello. All right, this is the pink. Okay, that's got pink sparkle. They seem fairly juicy. They're soaking directly into the paper. I know, right? Hashtag surprises, giggle, and two more for- Aww, cat. You are so sweet. All right, let's zoom that in. And in fact, I'm going to lighten this and keep it. Okay, do you see how that's kind of blue? Three surprises for Steve and two more for me. Steve, there's three surprises for you coming from Cat. His mouth's hanging open in shock, Cat. <laughs> Jay says hi. I was. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, first of all. Thank you. That's the appropriate response for a normal adult. <laughs> Steve, you, you've got Steve speechless. I'm excited for my Crayola. <laughs> all right, let's see. Let's do orange. It's really interesting that that's like a blue sparkle with it. Let's turn this, let's turn this up even more here. I want you to be able to see that sparkle. Hi, Jay. Okay. All right, let's see. Then this is the black. Hi, Michelle. Oh, how funny. The black Hi, has Anna. pink sparkle in it. The black has pink sparkle in it. Let's see. I want to try and get this so you can see as close as possible. Gosh, these are sparkly. Does Steve color? We've had him on a few streams, Alex. Um, since I got my tonsils out uh, about four weeks ago, Steve has been uh, helping me out a little bit and uh, doing the stream for me. Oh, that's funny. It looks even red in the video. Right, Callie? I know that, or not Callie, sorry, I saw camera and then I saw Allie and so I put the K with the A and yeah, there we go. That's a little bit more. All right, so this one is the green. It's funny, the sparkle seems to show up more as it dries. Okay, so the green looks like it's got the blue sparkle with it. Sorry, Steve, not Crayola, you're better than that. <laughs> okay, and then this is the blue and I was going to say it, it should be like there's blue sparkle in it, but it almost looks like they used green sparkle in this one. Okay, so let's slide this down. We're going to zoom out a little bit so you can see all, what, all eight of them. And then we're going to put the black right next to it. Right, Kat? It does. Like, these are really sparkly. Really sparkly. Hi, Michelle. My day was busy. Very busy. Hi, Sandy. All right, so now we're gonna do. So apparently they change color on dark paper. So that's what we're gonna. That's what we're gonna test now. So we've got the gold on the black. Let's see what it does. Okay, so it hasn't changed too much color. Still pretty good. Amazon says the colors show up different on black paper than white paper. Yep, boots. So we've got the black paper here. We're gonna try it right next to it. I am curious. And I wonder if that's because there's different color sparkles. So maybe the ink doesn't show up as much on the black paper. And what you'll see is just the uh, the sparkle. Okay, so now we have the silver. I think that's what it is, that mostly we're just seeing the glitter portion, which would explain why it's so glittery. They need to put a lot of glitter so that it pops out. Okay, now this is the purple. Yeah, the glitter, as it dries, the glitter shows up more. So the purple looks more blue on the black paper. Then we have the pink. Gold, silver, and pink are supposed to stay the same. Yeah, that makes sense. Because what I'm seeing here is like yellow glitter in here. And this one's got more of like pink glitter for the black. And then this one's got more blue and this one's got more green. So that's what I suspect. That's the pink. Yeah, the purple looks totally blue, exactly. So I think it's because of the color of glitter that's on there. All right. The orange. Yeah, that's showing up more yellow. Could the paper texture also affect on coloring? I don't think so, Jay, because I think what we're seeing is what the glitter color is. Because I can see on white what color the glitter is. And when you have the black, the ink's kind of soaking in, you're not really seeing the ink. And if there is any, the glitter is standing out more than that. Okay, so the black. 
yeah, the black is red. So I think the trick is how it works is just what color glitter they have in there. Okay, then here is the green. Yeah, that's, see, that's like an aqua right there too. That's how they're advertised, yeah. And lastly, we have the blue, which I think, I predict is gonna come out looking more green than blue. Maybe similar to the green. Let's see. Uh, yep, it's gonna look more green than it is blue. That's interesting though. I don't like that. You don't like it? You don't like that the blue and the green are switched? <laughs> he doesn't like it. So yeah, very cool. Those are, those are pretty dang sparkling, man. Yeah. I will say the ink seems to absorb a little bit more, so I don't know how well it will sit on top of pencil, but I do like how sparkly they are. They do rival the Artezas for me a little bit. So yeah, I'm excited to find a page to use these in. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started on our page so that we can make some headway with it, as lately we know I have been known to uh, not get quite as much done as I would like in one session. So we're going to zoom out. Right, Allie? Hi, Christine. All right. Get this in focus here. Oh, gosh, that's bright. Fix that. Focus this. Usually just takes a second since I do it all manually. All right, there we go. Wiggling with happiness because you like them. Exactly. Okay, so I printed this out um, on the Nina paper because I'm really excited to try it. But what I also did, um, I don't have the grayscale offered on Etsy. I just did this directly in Photoshop. But depending on how I like it, I may go ahead and add the grayscale to the, um, uh, for, you know, when you purchase, you get it. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking I might actually color on the grayscale tonight rather than the dark. Do I have any Clara Markova books? Um, let me look. Don't think so. Who did the fairies in dreamland one? Is that Clara Markova? No, that's, but no, I don't think I have any Clara Markova. All right, so if you have these and you are needing a color chart for them, I have this and you can find this on my website in the download section. Um, you can just type exclamation point website um, or go to emilyillustrator.com. Oh, nice, Alex. Um, anyway. Oh, thanks, Shannon. See, I need to delegate. I apologize. It was just instinct. I'll wait next time. I'm sorry, Shannon. Um, anyway, but there's a chart uh, as well as many others that are totally free for download. So if you're needing any color charts, take a look, see what I have. There's also um, some worksheets for our color theory class as well as some coloring downloads. Um, so anyway, feel free to take a look at that if that's something that you are needing. Clara is Magical Delights, Tenderful Enchantments, Fairy Miracles and Fairy Celebrations, her new one comes out next month. Oh, very cool, very cool. Oh, I'll tell you what I found, um, and this, you know, some of you may, may appreciate it, some of you are like, wait, what? Um, but I was looking and I realized that there was, there's a Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh, Monsters book, which I'm kind of like, eh, about. I'm not real big on like scary monstery kind of stuff, however, I happen to find that there is a regular Buffy the Vampire Slayer coloring book. Now it's really expensive on Amazon because there's not that many, but I found one on eBay. I'm not sure when it'll get here, but I found one on eBay for a good price and I'm super excited. So when that gets here, we'll go through that as well because I am pretty excited about it. Okay, let's make sure that is entirely in focus. I keep thinking like, why isn't this darker? And then I forgot it's grayscale. <laughs> okay. So I have this cute, tiny little, little case here with all the colors. I only have the Monarch color pencils out of the Black Widow set. I'm trying to figure out if I should buy the rest or use them for the pastels. Well, if you like them, I, I mean, for sure get them. I will say the Monarchs are softer. So when you get the others, the texture is going to feel a little bit different, but they all still work really well together. 
Um, so there are 72 colors here. This was also a lovely gift from our amazing, amazing cat. Uh, so I wanted to give them a try tonight. I started using them on this postcard that I still haven't finished. Um, so I have played with them a little bit. I need to do this little bit here and I need to do the background. Um, but one of these days I'll probably do a giveaway for this postcard whenever I get around to finish it. All right, let's see here. All right, so I drew this picture, what was it, last week, two weeks ago, but I just had this idea for it and I just decided to roll with it. Do they resemble Cher's any? I'm not sure, Sherry. I haven't compared them. I'm trying to think. I don't remember there being a huge distinct difference. Okay. So let's start with color. So I've got um, got this kind of swirly patch here. I've got kind of this plaid here plus the plants. I want to start with. Mm -hmm. I could just start with the main hat portion. I'm thinking a green would be good. So let's take a look at our chart here. Isn't she Jay? She's wonderful. Uh, we're going to use the Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor Shell. And if anybody's just kind of curious what they are or what they're about, um, some paper they don't uh, color gun. Well, I guess we'll try it out. I haven't tried the Nina paper yet, so I'm pretty excited. Um, there, you can type in exclamation point Lyra or the link for the Lyra Rembrandts are in the description below. Um, okay, so let's grab... Let's grab... Hmm. Grab cedar green, number 74. Okay, cedar green. Let's grab moss green, number 68. And let's grab apple green, number 70. And let's grab cream, number two. Hi, Azalina. Yeah, I think as far as price-wise, they're pretty similar, Sherry. Okay, 202. Okay, so we have... We have cedar green, 74, moss green, 68, apple green, number 70, and cream, number 2. Okay. All right. All of those three are sharpened. This one is not, so give it a quick sharpen. Ah, cannot do it at that angle. One second. It doesn't need to be sharpened too much. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. Ah, why am I using my hand? <laughs> Thanks again to Kenny. <laughs> okay, so let's start with cedar green. And like I said, you can find this image uh, in my Etsy store. Also, there's a link in the description below for anybody um, watching back. All right, so cedar green. I'm a little shaky tonight, so hopefully. I think it goes on real nice. See how it works out when I start. So I decided to do this page just because, I don't know about you guys, but we had this massive cold front that came through. Um, it was actually like a little chilly outside. It was weird. I keep thinking this is like too light and I'm blowing out the lines, but I forget that I printed this a little bit lighter. Uh, yeah, Isolina, when I was uh, recovering, Kenny sent me the, uh, the brush. I can zoom in a little bit too. Let's zoom in. Make sure that's in focus. There we go. That's better. I like my coals better than the layers. I think the layers lay down softer colors than the coals. I don't think I've tried the coals, uh, Loretta. What's the what's the full name of the coals? Um, essentially, Michelle. Yeah. Uh, I talked to them. 
yesterday. Um, the thing of it is, is I think my sinuses are having to readjust to how things are now because they took my adenoids also. So in all, my whole system's just kind of off and um, I haven't gone to get the correct adjustments for my chiropractor in a while just because of COVID. Um, and so between my sinuses trying to figure out what the heck is going on now and all of that, um, I've had some headaches lately, which is why I canceled on um, Monday. But my doctor is going to put me on a new medicine and we're kind of getting things um, figured out. But essentially, as far as like diet and stuff is concerned, yes, they did give me the all clear. However, I find that I'm still kind of um, like if I eat something that's highly acidic, I find that my throat gets a little irritated from that. And I think partially just kind of healing. Um, I learned something this week. Grapes are apparently highly acidic. Like they're not a citrus fruit, but they're right up there. Like as far as acidity level, like almost like pineapple. And I was, you know, trying to eat better and I, you know, eat some fresh fruit. I eat the grapes. And the next day I was just like, why is this hurting so much? Like I couldn't figure it out. And then Steve and I were talking and we put two and two together and we're just like, holy cow, this is because of the grapes. Like, anyway, needless to say, everything I'm eating, I am seriously double checking. <laughs> oh, the Koei Noors, Koei Noors. Okay, 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 okay. I gotcha, I gotcha. Sorry, I thought, I thought you meant the Coles. I'm like, wait a minute, I know there's a store called Coles. I know, Allie, me too. I absolutely love it, but because uh, I just, my skin does not love it, and apparently neither does my throat, so I can't eat them as much. You like harder pencils? Yeah, these are pretty soft, for sure. I think, now that I'm like coloring with them again, because I was finishing with the favorite castells I feel like uh, these, are, these are definitely softer than the Shapiro Farben's. Let's see, is anyone else having issues hearing Emily more than, um, I can move the mic a little bit closer, but I seem to be in the yellow, so I think we're okay. I had my hand on my left side of my face here, so that might have been blocking it. They hurt your hands? Oh, harder pencils do. I gotcha, I gotcha. But yeah, so that was one of the reasons that I canceled on Monday, but hopefully I've got things figured out now and we can get back to normal. So. Oh, I've got, um... I've got uh, eczema alley. I've had it for ages and citrus fruits, lemons, limes, oranges. It's not as bad now, um, but pineapple especially um, will make me all itchy. <laughs> all right, Michelle, have a great night. Yeah, Shapiro's and Arteza's. I, like, it's nice to have a hard pencil that lets out a lot of pigment. Tombow's are a very hard pencil, like the Erosionton Tombow's but they just don't let out enough pigment. I feel like I have to push like super hard. So when I drew this, I was trying to think of a non-traditional almost style hat. Um, so I was thinking why not, you know, kind of fold it. Like it's sewed together, you know, with a nice thick thread. I like the idea of having this kind of unconventional seam going all the way up the hat. I had to reattach, oh, reteach myself with the Prisma blend. Yeah, there's definitely a huge difference with Prismas. Um, Prismas were like all I used in the beginning, but now I have a hard time going back to them. I have a dry spot on both hands and I've been eating a lot of pineapple. That might be it, Allie, especially like for me, if I'm washing my hands a lot, um, they'll get dry, but it gets even worse when I eat uh, citrus fruits. So lemons, limes, grapefruits, pineapple, um, anything that's high in citrus, and also, um, I mean, I steer clear of sugar anyway, um, but um, uh, my skin will also dry out because of um, sugar. And, you know, as much as I say I dislike living in Texas, I will say one of the things, um, yeah, Allie, that'll do it too. One of the things that um, I like about living here is because there's so humi so much humidity, um, my hands don't dry out nearly as much as they did when we lived in Oregon. Yeah, uh, Ali, uh, cortisone makes a really good uh, eczema lotion that's fantastic. You can really like lather them up at night um, before you go to bed and it'll be great. Or if they're really bad, 
you can always lather up your hands with Vaseline and pop gloves on and sleep with that on overnight. Sometimes if my hands are super bad, I'll do that and they're like literally 50% better by the next morning. So do it two nights in a row and it's fantastic. It's very cold in Minnesota right now. I know, I saw that uh, Colorado got snow. All right, so number 68, moss green. Absolutely crazy. Meanwhile, all of the West Coast is having some issues. We have lots of family out there, so we've been keeping up on all the um, the fires and stuff. But um, hopefully, hopefully they'll get some rain here soon. Let's see, using coconut oil topically and internally helps. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. I like the Art and Fly pencils, believe it or not. I have a small set, the larger set they came out. I'm not a huge fan of the paper castells. I've never tried the Art and Fly. Yeah, Alex, it's it's real rough. Um, like I said, a lot of my family lives out there, and so they are, um, you know, the skies are just practically orange right now. So we're just, thankfully, they're in a pretty safe place. Um, there's a lot of water between them and the fires, so we're hoping that that will keep everything at bay for sure. Do not use bad words like that. Wait, what bad words? What did I say? Oh, about the hands, yeah. Wait, what did I say, cat? Oh, Alex, is that uh is that whereabouts you're at? Could be told, like when I draw things. I don't have how I'm gonna color them in mind. Like honestly, like I'm just sort of just sort of rolling with it. I'm thinking more about the composition of the drawing itself than I am like I don't really see the color in my head right away. Snow is a four-letter word. <laughs> oh I want to start with S and ends with W. Sorry, sorry, no snow. No, um I meant to say snoo or <clears throat> help me out, Steve. Stow! Stow away! Stow? Stow things in your car? Show. I don't know. Show! Show! Go, get on with the show! Good night, Noni! <laughs> oh man, Alex, that's rough. Yeah, we've just been praying for rain and watching it all unfold. You know, it's not like we could even go there to help right now. I mean, it's just... It's hard when, I mean, because that's where Steve and I are from, and so it's hard to see that happen. I mean, they're saying this is a once-in-a-hundred-year event, you know what I mean? Like, the odds of this happening, because it's so wet in, in Oregon all the time, it rains all the time, like, this isn't generally an issue. Yes, that's Steve, is Alina, he's hanging out. We're not in danger, but it's very smoky out, yeah. Yeah, my, my family's been sending me pictures and everything, and the sky is just orange and red and hardly any clear sky. So, we're just hoping for some relief soon. Zelina says hi! Hi, Oh, that's good, Alex. That's good. Yeah, we keep watching to see what the county um, evacuations what the county evacuations are. We're just like, fingers crossed that it doesn't reach the county where our family's at. So, like time will tell, I suppose. The problem is, is they're, like, they're so big right now, we have to rely on nature. I mean, they're, they're doing their best to put them out, but odds are it's not gonna get ext extinguished until, you know, they get Real good rain, which is what everybody is praying for at the moment. Which I found it so ironic that here we are, 68 degree weather in Texas, while up there it's like in the hundreds and everything's on fire. It's like, what, what kind of topsy-turvy world is this right now, you know? <laughs> anyway. Back to positive things. Alright, so we're coloring. Woohoo! Who else is excited that it's fall, though? Has anybody made anything um, pumpkin-y yet? I made some muffins with the kids the other day. We're going back to number 74. Um, I have this really good banana muffin recipe, but um, I'm trying to really steer clear of any kind of sugar, and um, I was trying to think of how I could get some extra protein, you know, with what we had around the house into the muffins. So I made up this recipe of peanut butter and honey and banana muffins, and they were pretty good. I enjoyed them. 
2020, right, Shannon? <laughs> yeah, anybody else over 2020? I'm just, I'm just, I'm good. We can, we can move on now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the muffins were, were really good. I do have a really good pumpkin muffin recipe. Uh, they live uh, up in Oregon, Melissa. So, I mean, it's the whole West Coast. I mean, you've got California, Oregon, Washington. Does pumpkin pie frozen custard count? Yes, it does. <laughs> It absolutely does. Um, let's go ahead and try a little bit of apple green. Good apple green. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. I just can't get in the fall spirit until September 22nd or whatever day the aut autumnal equinox is. Well, considering it's Texas, and I needed a sweater to go check the mail uh, yesterday. I'm like, all right, that's fair. I can get out the pumpkin stuff. <laughs> yeah, see, Shannon, I'm right there with you. Like the, the pumpkin spice lattes and everything. I tried those. I just don't get the hype. I do not find them tasty. But the pumpkin muffins that I make, they've got a lot of sp uh, like spices in them, like ginger and all of that. So they're more like spi spice muffins with uh, a hint of a hint of pumpkin. Um, but they're really good because they're not, like the recipe calls for like sprinkling sugar on top, but they're not overly sweet because I don't sprinkle the sugar on top. So it's really nice. All right. Uh, now number Aw, uh, thanks, Pam. Uh, color in them, does that count? Yes. Yes, it does, Shannon. Mom used to make me pumpkin pie for my birthday in lieu of cake. Aw, I like that. The big open space to coloring so different from the Johanna Bass Perfect. Yeah, I know it's throwing me a little bit, but I liked, I liked, you know, and I've got the smaller stuff, uh, stuff back here, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't want to overwhelm it a little bit. And if for some reason you have this and you want to have it a smaller space, um, you could always, um, like print it out smaller, you know, like print it out on like a five by seven or four by six. A little bit sherry, yeah, and they're they're laying down on the paper really well. I mean, I'm using it a, a very very light hand, for sure. Um, I'm not pressing real hard, at all. Thanks, Allie. We're just using the uh, moss green at the moment, and it helps to like not going in this with like a super. And actually, that's a little bit right. That's a little bit more accurate. Um, so if you look. We'll lighten that a little bit now. Okay, so do you see how there's a little bit of an angle to the very tip? That helps to get a nice soft thing. So sometimes even if you sharpen it right away, maybe color it on a piece of paper so you get a little bit smoother edge here. Um, because with a... Um, too bright. Uh, with a softer edge, it's easier for you to do light layers. Yeah, they're a little bit softer, but if you're talking budget-wise, then yeah, you're probably fine with the Shapiro Farbens. And lots of little circles helps too, to keep nice kind of smooth layering on it. All right, then let's go ahead and grab apple green again. I've been going through and watching uh, Call the Midwife. I don't know if anybody likes that show. I'm telling you, it has some tearjerker episodes, but I do enjoy it. After one of the, there was a character that left that was kind of a main character in the story. Um, the show still survived pretty well, so I was impressed with that. Mm. 
what is everybody coloring at the moment? Is anybody coloring right now? And what are you working on? Definitely going to need to go in darker on this side. Can't wait till I get all my videos put in their slots since I don't know how to edit them together. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I love Call the Midwife, Christine. Oh, dot art. Very cool, Sherry. Nice, Molly. What are you coloring? Oh, nice, Melissa. Yeah, I love when you go into Hobby Lobby and they've got that whole section of scrapbooking stickers. Hi, Rhea. Oh, nice, Kat. You'll have to post it when you're all done. Oh, awesome, Allie. <laughs> Magical Delights, nice. All right, let's go ahead and grab our, what is this, cedar green again. Oreo. Oh, nice, Jay. Oh, a steampunk picture, very cool. Is that what you call Rhea, Shannon? Actually, Rhea, is it Rhea or is it Ray? I always say Rhea, but then I heard, I can't remember who it was, somebody else's stream and they called you Ray. So what is it? Is it Rhea or Ray? Ray makes more sense. After I heard it, I was like, ooh, I've probably been saying that wrong. <laughs> oh, nice, is Alina. Raya. Okay. So it was like a blend of both. All right. So I wasn't necessarily wrong or right. <laughs> it's like Rhea. But if, if she was spelling it phonetically and it was going to be Rhea, she would have used two E's. I think it's Rhea. I don't think it's Rhea. I think it's Rhea. Okay. What is it? Is it? All right. Steve thinks that it's Rhea. But I'm thinking that R-E-Y-A sounds like Rhea. Okay, so who's right? I, I, Emily thinks that it's Ray, as in Rhea. Steve thinks that it's Re, as in Rhea. Ah, not Rhea. I was right. Ha ha. <laughs> Well, I didn't say Rita. I think the T was a mistake. Ha! See, Kenny says I was right. These are the things we discuss. <laughs> oh, awesome, Kat. We're definitely going to be going back in with like a brown or a red to um, to balance some of this color. Yeah, I thought about doing like a mandala design on this, but I kind of liked the idea of just keeping it a simple hat, you know? Call a midwife fan, I like Trisk or, or, or uh, Trixie. Yeah, uh, instead of a SK, it's a it's a T R I X I E, I believe. It's all Belinda's fault. I was told not to buy anything new until after Christmas, but hey, I don't follow orders well. I <laughs> can't. Uh, I'm sorry, Sherry. I know that's a little nerve wracking. Thankfully, for those that have to evacuate, there seems to be advance notice, so a lot of people are able to get out at least, so that's something. 
I'm kind of just doing, you know, where these little rumple pieces are, and then we'll fill in with the other color as well. Okay, so I know that says live rescue, but I literally read that as liver rescue. And I was like, what the heck is liver rescue? <laughs> but yes, I hope they stay safe. Oh no, cat! Oh, it's Lena. Oh man, I'm sorry, Sherry. Well, hang in there. All we can do is just kind of wait and hope for the best. It's hard when you want to, you know, help fix things, but just nothing we can do when we're all the way over here. I'm going to zoom that out just a little bit. Oh gosh, that looks really yellow. That looks too dark. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, so we're still using cedar green. I know I'm not talking a ton. Part of me also yeah, I want to make sure I get a decent amount done tonight. I've been realizing that I'm not getting as much done as I should and pages are taking me so much longer. And I want you guys to be able to see a finished page on stream one of these days. <laughs> of course, Sherry. Uh, Momo says, I ask a question. I have an HP laser jet printer. Whenever I print any images to color, even if I let it sit for a few days, my pencils scrape off the line work. Any suggestions? Um, hmm. An HP laser jet printer? My only thing would be that it could be the e Oh, cat! Thank you, cat. Can we get some hypes in chat for cat? <laughs> There's Steve's hype. You can use the emotes. You can type exclamation point high. Thanks so much, cat. You're so sweet. Um, but I would my my best thing is thinking that it's that it's the ink. Even if you're letting it sit for a while, it could just be the type of ink you're using. I have a Canon, and I haven't had that too many um, too many issues with it. So I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't know, maybe the paper's not absorbing it as well. Are you using any, are you using like generic ink or is it HP brand ink? I had that issue um, sometimes in a few of Johanna's books where the ink would smear if I was using um, Prismacolors and spreading it around too much. Thank you, cat. <laughs> okay. Abby's call is fine. The group he's with just made the news and he'll probably be out all night. Oh man, Alex. Ah, uh, see, I love Halloween. We we're trying to think about what we could do for the kids, because um, obviously we are not going trick or treating this year. Um, so we were trying to think of what we could do for the kids instead. 
And I remember when I was younger, I grew up in this really small town and there was this um, Halloween bazaar we would always go to. Um, and uh, they had all kinds, you know, they had costume contests and all kinds of things. So, and they had this thing, you know, they had like a cakewalk. So I was thinking I would do like fun little games for the kids that way. Still let them get dressed up in their costumes and then just, you know, have a, essentially a Halloween party here at the house. I think that could work because their birthday is soon after that also so we were thinking up alternatives for the birthday as well yeah exactly exactly as Lena those kinds of things I don't want them to feel like they missed out you know but it's just part of life now I suppose eventually you know it'll even out when things get safe again and we'll go back to normal but in the meantime you know we will just make do and they seem excited about the idea, so. Yeah, Alex, exactly, exactly. And you know, they're young, they're pretty flexible with all of this. Treasure hunt with clues. Oh, I like, yeah, I like the clues. Scavenger hunt. Oh, cat, I like that. A spooky theme scavenger hunt. That could be fun. They hated taking us trick or treating, so did we. Inevitably, there was a cold drizzle and wood smoke to, to trigger allergies. Oh, no, Patty. And I am not in frame. I apologize. That's my bad. I know. Thoroughly embarrassed. <laughs> Pat, Steve's over here talking about how curious he is. Does he does he get any hints as to uh, what his surprise is? Laptop making a noise. Normal thing. Okay. Kind of like high pitched. Okay. I thought it was having ringing in my ears. I'm like, what am I hearing? <laughs> it's not bothering me. I was just trying to figure out what it was. Or I wasn't going crazy. I mean, I'm a little crazy, but you know. Another thing is do is a mystery meal. Fix a meal, but make menu where you have to order items with spooky names. Oh, that could be fun. Hint, it's in three parts. Oh man. It's a three piece suit. A <laughs> three piece suit. It doesn't sound like something uh, you How can... you knew my size, I'll never know. <laughs> oh lord. Halloween isn't big in Australia, slowly building momentum, but I wonder why that is, Pam. I mean, what does the his. Oh. <laughs> Definitely didn't just hit the camera with the pencil, because, you know, I would never do that with my pencils. <laughs> Hint, you will be all set. <laughs> His eyes just got big. I mean, the history of Halloween, I mean, I'm sh you know, it dates back a while, I'm sure. Um, you know, this is, we're obviously at this point, it's a very Americanized version. You know, I'm sure there's a big history with it, but I'm curious about like this whole trick or treating kind of thing like where did when did the trick-or-treating start that's what I'm curious about Does anybody know the history about modern Halloween hi B hello hello just working on a little fall hat I wouldn't even say it's a witch's hat I mean it's a conical hat sure but All of the fall hat. That was kind of what I had in mind. It's a druid thing? Yeah, but at what point did it turn Americanized, like with trick-or-treating and stuff? Or I guess not even Americanized. At what point did it turn modern? I mean, because like trick-or-treating, scarecrow hat, there you go. Trick-or-treating, I mean, is done in the UK too, right? It's, I mean, it's not just in the US. 
Hi, Amber. I guess more than when did Halloween get its start, it, when did the modern part of it get its start, you know? Why is there going to be 12, 14 this year so they each get a friend over and are going to watch scary movies? I'm ordering pizza and buying them candy. Aw, that's nice, Alex. Well, the pandemic's still pretty bad down here. Um, the kids have had a couple of positive cases at their school already. Makes me really glad we kept them home. Um, but for us, it's too much of a risk to even have them invite friends over and stuff. So, like, for their birthday party, um, you know, for their birthday parties, we always say, you know, gifts aren't required kind of thing. But I think we'll have, if their friends want to get them anything, they'll, you know, do Amazon or something and have it shipped. And then we'll do, like, a a drive-by, uh, drive-by birthday party where people can, you know, drive by and, you know, honk horns. We just did that for, um, a friend's birthday party and the kids thought it was so cool. So, you know, we'll set up a table outside where the kids, you know, we'll decorate it all birthday style. They can get all dressed up and then their friends can drive by and wish them happy birthday. So they're pretty excited about that. Let's see. It's not fall this side of the world. I think that's why it never really took off. That's fair. At the turn of the century, the kids used to dress up and throw a handful of flour in the faces of people who answered the door. <laughs> really? Oh, that's hilarious. Probably not hilarious for the people who've got flour thrown in their faces, but still. Maybe that's where the trick or treat portion came in. Trick was chucking flour at people. We're still just using moss green right now, kind of filling all this in. Although it's unknown precisely where and when the phrase trick or treat was coined, the custom had been firmly established in American popular culture by 1951. Okay, yeah, so it is an American thing. When trick or treating was depicted in the Peanuts comic strip in 1952, Disney produced a cartoon called Trick or Treat featuring Donald Duck and his nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Oh, how funny! I didn't even realize that. So Halloween is basically Kid Mafia. Pay us with candy or we'll prank you! <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. See, I wondered if it was more of an American thing. I don't know. I've always loved Halloween, but I've always inevitably ended up living in a neighborhood that didn't get a whole lot of Halloween traffic. So I haven't actually, in my lifetime, I haven't handed out that much candy. Now, that being said, living where we are now, um, we, we've got two towns that are connected to each other. And one town is known for being a bit more posh than the other. So if you get the kids all dressed up and you take them to the nicer neighborhoods, um, there's usually a lot of people trick-or-treating out there. Whole streets are like decked out with lights and decorations. Um, usually they've got like some sort of theme going on in their garage or something and the kids will go trick-or-treating there um, and generally you know I feel more comfortable taking the kids to a nicer neighborhood you know when you're taking candy from strangers and then obviously you know we double check all the candy and everything before the kids get to eat it um, but yeah I mean half the time um, our kids like because we're not gonna let them just eat it till it makes them sick I mean you know so we'll dole it out over the weeks and then eventually the kids honestly just forget about the candy and then it it's really old in the cupboard and we throw it away a couple months later. <laughs> uh, let's see. When I was young, the night before Halloween was gate night and that was for pranks. Oh, how funny. Our family does Halloween so many in Australia and that's because of my Irish heritage. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I get that. For the Celts, the veil between living and dead was down on some way. It's like some hand, some hand. I know there's a way to pronounce that, but I'm, I think I'm doing it wrong. Um, treats were left out for spirits so they wouldn't play tricks on children. Oh, okay. I didn't know that part. I loved trick-or-treating as a kid. The neighbors would give me double treat. Oh, I know. And it was always, uh, always a big hit when you hit the house that gave out full-size candy bars. That was always uh, a big deal. But yeah, I have fond memories of it as a kid. Like I said, um, the church that we went to when I was little, they had the, the kind of Halloween bazaar, and so that was the big thing that we got to go to. And we lived in a pretty small town at the time, and so um, it was small enough, and it was, you know, in the 
early 90s and stuff so when we were in grade school we'd parade around um you know we'd take our class and we'd parade around town to all the local businesses and we'd have our little halloween parade and we'd walk and and the businesses would um hand out candy and stuff so that was fun let's see usually get 300 trick-or-treaters at least seriously wow alex when uh the kids were well, younger than they are now, um, there's a place here where they would do Halloween contests or, you know, Halloween costume contests. And the year that um, we placed, was it the Dorothy costume or the dragon costume? I want to say it was the dragon costume that we placed, right? Anyway, um, so the year that I did the, the Dorothy costume, um, I... I decided to and this wasn't for me this was this was for my daughter um i decided to make her a costume i'm pretty handy with a sewing machine and i was just like okay sweet i'll get the pattern for it and then this way we don't have to worry about um we don't have to worry about any duplicate costumes or anything so i worked real hard and i made her the cutest little uh dorothy costume we had little pigtails in her hair she had little red sparkle shoes she did this little pose where she popped her hips she was like what two at the time yeah, she was two, and she did this cute little pose where she popped her hip. Like, it was absolutely adorable. And then we saw some other kid had this exact same costume. Some other kid's parent thought had the exact same idea, idea I did and must have gone to Joanne's at some point and, and made the same costume. And I was like, no, it was a handmade costume. We're not supposed to have duplicates. Well, no, Alex, don't time out. Wait, what? Why did Alex get timed out? Why did it time out that? Costco's not a bad word. Oh, because there was no space between the period and lol. And so Nightbot thought she was doing a website, bags.lol. <laughs> Sorry, Alex, it's only for five seconds. The best one. Yeah, no, it didn't think it sweared. It thought that Alex put in a website. It was the dot. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh my gosh. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> Nightbot's just feeling a little overzealous. Brian was a beautiful beauty. Oh, how funny. Um, but yeah, so there was that costume. And then um, I have a few costumes for her I was pretty proud of. And then we did... Um, she really liked Paw Patrol at the time. And she really, really liked... I think this was when she was three... Yes, you can use periods, but because there was no space, it thought he was putting in a website. That's why. Um, but uh, she really liked Paw Patrol at the time, and she really wanted to be a merpup, but there was no Paw Patrol merpup costumes. So I got some, you know, faux fur from Joann's and some, um, like, mermaid tail scale kind of material, and I made her a merpup costume, complete with clip-on ears and face paint. She was very excited about that one. And then the one where we placed at the costume contest, I made her a dragon costume. But what I did, because as much as I can sew, I have a hard time with, like, shirts and stuff. Um, so what I did is I got some black leggings and a black um, short sleeve shirt. And I got some green felt, some green sparkle, so like two different color green felts, so you don't have to hem it. And I cut out a bunch of triangles, and then I sewed on, you know, alternating. Basically, they were scales. I cannot tell you how much effort I put into this costume. Um, but I sewed scales onto the shirt and the pants, and then I fabricated her some wings using... Um, like the wire that they use in bouquets and stuff when they're putting together. Um, yes, sleeves are miserable to sew, right, Patty? Um, rubble on the double, exactly, Azalina. <laughs> Sounds good, Melissa. Thanks for hanging out. I'm okay with hems if it's a simple hem, you know, like a shirt or pants or skirt or something. Um, but anyway, I use some like kind of sheer sparkly pink material and the uh, bouquet wire and all of that. And um, I made her some wings. I found some clearance Batman shoes at Target that were really inexpensive. And then I went ahead and hot glued on scales onto that too. So we made her a dragon and I, I did face paint for that one too. And we ended up getting, I think, second place. And so she got, you know, a prize and some books and stuff like that. Um, 
the first place winner, I remember I just I was just like, oh man, her costume was epic. Like, why didn't we get first? And then I saw what it was. Um, a family had all the kids dress up as um, uh, like circus animals. And the kid in my daughter's category was dressed as a lion and they had taken a wagon and turned the wagon into a cage. And so it was either circus or zoo or something. But anyway, they, it was it was pretty, pretty involved. Uh, and so they got first place. So I was like, OK, that's fair. They, they worked really hard on that. Um, but we were just excited to place. And now the event that we go to, it's just too popular. We got there one year, like an hour ahead of time, and we had to wait in line. By the time we got to the building, because there hadn't ever been a line before, I don't know what made it so popular all of a sudden, the costume contest was over. And I think, oh, you know what? That was the Pup year. And so she never got to enter her costume in the contest, in the costume contest. But, um... I was very unhappy. We put a lot of work into that. And then I was just like, you know what? I don't, I don't do these, you know, I, I, she wanted the costume of the Mer pup and I wanted her to have what she wanted. And so, you know, the, the costume contest was a perk, but I was just like, you know, the costume contest, is just secondary. You know, I wanted to do it for her and she loved her costume so much. So that was enough for me. <laughs> yes, me too, Kat. My mom made ours also. Which is why I enjoyed making her so much. You know, now that the kids are older, I probably do more store-bought clothes or costumes and stuff. But, you know, I've, I've made them quite a bit of stuff. thing of it is, is when they're younger, too. Like, I went through all the effort to, like, make my son a costume once. And then he changed his mind. And I was like, well, this is exhausting. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to use apple green now, number 70. Slide that down a little bit. And drink water real quick yeah that's pretty much where ours come from now sharing I mean she started wanting to be Elsa you know from Frozen and and all that kind of stuff and it was just it was just easier just purchasing it when there's perfectly good Elsa costumes out there you know what I'll do though is I'll go to Target after Halloween and I will um, purchase them when all the costumes are really on sale and stuff. Kind of filling in this space here. We're getting there. Okay. Oh my gosh, yeah, that'd be a lot of yarn, Shannon. <laughs> All right, I wanna get a contrasting color here. Let's grab Indian red. Hang on one second, okay, chat? There we go. Okay, we're back now. Okay, uh, what did I say? Indian red. Number 92. Oh. You were in Las Vegas around Halloween one year and the costumes were awesome in the shops. If I, had, if I could have had space in the suitcase. Oh, I know, right? Okay, uh, let's see. Number 92. And 
and we're going to be doing like a darker brown here so I'm not too worried about the fact that I'm going over the threads. And here I was Mary Mary quite contrary and there was an awesome tiger costume and I was lamb chop and an Indian made an oh awesome cat. And a low budget and then luck of tissue right myself. <laughs> Funny. See if I can find Oh wait, a picture of what? What I miss? Oh, the Cousin It costume. Gotcha. Mary Poppins. Nice. One year, um, I just got these little uh, polyester costumes of one of a piece of bread that had peanut butter and a piece of bread that had jelly. And that was Steve and I's costumes. We were uh, peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Father told us the story of the original jack-o'-lantern. Jack lied and tricked the devil, so when he died, he couldn't go to heaven. Oh, Lord, ask me. And we're going to go over with another layer of the greens as well. And if anybody watching this back is curious, you can find this page in my Etsy store. There's also a link in the description below. Thank you, Shannon. Okay. I'm gonna zoom out because I keep going out of frame for this hat. There we go. That a little bit darker. That's too dark. Watching while scrolling through my Kindle books, can't remember the title or the author of a book I read before. <laughs> Friend made this awesome bug sapper costume out of two hula hoops and a blue netting thing and some blinking magnetic LEDs. Oh, that's cool. Hang on one more second, chat. Sorry, chat, just had to clear my throat real quick. We're just adding some of that brown in here. It's coming along. I'm actually really enjoying how this is looking. I'm not going to lie. Like I said, when I draw these pictures, I don't see in my head what the coloring is going to be. But now that I'm adding it to it, I'm really enjoying how it's looking. Okay, that looks really dark for you guys, though. So I'm going to lighten that just a smidge. That's better. 
Awesome, Pam. Have fun. All right, cedar green. Aw, thanks, Christine. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah, I find it really nice when it kind of really starts to come together, you know? I'm just using that, what is it, Peter? Yeah, cedar green. My brother went to a college party as a bathroom wall, white shirt, white pants, some stripes to make look like tile, rope with a roller TP and a pen so people could write on the wall. <laughs> oh, cat, that's hilarious. Sounds like it's kitty snack time. I know I love apples when they're really, really ripe. The texture is different, so my grandmother called, called mealy. Oh, no, I don't like the mealy apples, Loretta. I do not. <laughs> Gosh, I don't even know how many layers we've done on this hat. We've done a lot. Aw, thanks, Momo. Yeah, because the idea is, is I'm going to do brown for the braided rope around the bottom. And then this is going to be like a red and green kind of plaid. This will probably be a blue. These leaves will probably be kind of a, a dark, a darker red. Not sure about this stuff yet. But this will definitely be a nice kind of almost burgundy, purpley kind of color. I'm just kind of slowly building up all the color on it. I mean, it is a lot of space to cover and I want to make sure that I do it justice. make your mouth inch interesting yeah I love honey crisp you know what else I really like I love a good yellow apple yeah honey crisp are, are a little bit more expensive for sure but yeah I love a really good yellow apple Pink ladies. Okay, okay. I think we usually default to... What do we get? The Gala apples? No, what do we get? Fuji. Fuji. Fuji apples. My daughter loves apples. She would eat them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Which is good. It's good that she likes them. I cut up apples 
put caramel over them, and then heat them so the warm and gooey. That's not bad. That sounds delicious. A couple months ago, or maybe a month ago, I don't remember when it was, um, but I finally made my first homemade caramel. It's so good. It's funny. I'll say caramel, but I also say caramel. Like, I say both. Oh, by the way, Mary, I'm with you. I say it mauve. <laughs> Pink Lady and Golden Delicious. Yes, Golden Delicious. That's what it is. I like those. Yeah, they're definitely a splurge for sure. Okay, apple green. A splurge? Honey crisp. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, honey apples are spender. Oh, wait, no, not apple yet. I meant to do moss green. Sorry. The name Red Delicious is very deceiving. They they are red, but they're not delicious. Those are like the apples that you always got at school lunch, and they just taste bitter. Like they had to name it Red Delicious so that it actually <laughs> That's false advertising. Nothing delicious about those. They are red, but there's nothing delicious. You should call them like red and technically an apple. That's the name of them. Gala apple. Yep, yep, yep. Not big on pink lady apples and Fuji's. There's one other kind of Macintosh apples. This is the one with starts Macintosh again. No, I'm not familiar with Macintosh. I mean, I really know if I saw them. Gala, yeah. Macintosh are kind of shaped more like a donut and they're very white on the side. Mm. Or core the apple and put red hots in the middle mixed with cinnamon and sugar and then bake them. Oh my goodness, Kat. Okay, so I will say though, um, gosh, what was that name? Was it Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory? The one that was in the mall? That had the candy apples? Okay, so Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory in Oregon, um, they sell candy apples and I absolutely love them. And when we first moved down here, my mother-in-law would actually get them for me and she... <laughs> She'd mail them to me, but she wouldn't slice it. Like, you can get them sliced in the store. And so it was like, in case, it was actually really good when it got here. But what it was is the candy apple that I got was, or I guess it was a caramel apple, was dipped in caramel, and then it had... Caramel. Was it... Were there Rice Krispies on it? I don't remember. I don't know. Oh, now, yeah. But there were marshmallows. There was milk chocolate, like... So it was dipped in caramel, and then there were marshmallows. I want to say there were just plain Rice Krispies on it, so it gave it a little bit of a crunch factor. And then there was white chocolate drizzled on it. Actually, there might have not been Rice Krispies, but there was like mini marshmallows, white chocolate, milk chocolate, and on top of it was it was dipped in caramel. And then you cut it up and eat it, but oh my goodness. Caramel apple. See, I'm saying caramel and caramel. And I say caramel by itself, then that's when I say it. But if I say caramel apples, I'm going to say caramel apples. So I say both. Ask your chat how they say this Caribbean sea. Caribbean. Well, how would, how would they type that out, though? Okay. Type 1 if you say Caribbean, or type 2 if you say Caribbean. See, for me, too, that's situational. I say both. Let's see. My band students always beg to eat in the band room. It's ridiculous what they throw out. Oh, no. I love homemade applesauce with bread hots in it. Oh, nice. So we've got a two, a one, a two, a one, a two. That's right. Candy apples are covered in a hard shell. A two. Okay, so we got four twos and two ones. Yeah, sorry. It's the, ca the caramel. Because candy apples, it's like red, right? The, the candy on the outside is red. Oh, and Waldorf salad. Okay. Oh, we have another one. Yeah, I say both, though, because I say Caribbean Sea, but I say Pirates of, of the, the Caribbean. Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah, I think I say both also. Pirates of the Caribbean. That doesn't sound right. But Caribbean Sea also doesn't. Yeah, situational. Yeah, Patty, I agree. I agree. Yeah, Loretta, situational. Woohoo, made it through the A's, but still haven't found the book. Oh no, Patty. <laughs> TMJ, is that that tongue thrusting thing, Sherry? What, what's, remind me what TMJ is again. I feel like it has something to do with the tongue. Your jaw lock. Oh, yeah, that would do it. Especially when you have uh, the candy stuff, yeah. Unless you forget to put the red dye in the sugar, which I honestly would be okay with. There's a lot of unnecessary red food dye out there. Yeah, 
see we're slowly adding more and more layers and it's darkening up a little bit lockjaw that's what it is Kitty, 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 no, will you, will you get her out of here? Kitty. Kitty, no! Don't jump up here, kitty. Oh, oh kitty, no. No. Kitty. no. <laughs> this is why kitty isn't allowed in here. Not while I'm streaming. Kitty. No, kitty. She's meowing at me. Honey, you just ate. I'm not giving you more. Don't you jump up here. <laughs> Go get it. Oh, she's coming to you. Okay. Oh, now you're going to him. <laughs> oh, lockjaw is something else? Oh, okay. See, I'm adding these little bits here because it kind of helps give the look of fabric. I don't know how well you can see it on there, but it gives it the look of fabric. Different shaded areas, not just one solid color. my wisdom teeth taken out in my 20s interesting yeah we both both steve and i actually had our wisdom teeth taken out at a similar time All right, let's grab that apple green again. Oh man, cat. Part of your jaw bunches up and the jaw hinges from damage to some kind of jaw, not lined up. Oh, interesting. All right, apple green. Kind of go over everything with this. I'm gonna kind of fill in a lot of this space here, but I'm also still going really light. Thinking we might break out the um, Paranda Ash blender pencil here. Doing okay, Steve? Use the massage pillow. All right. Why don't you go get a snack? It only just turned 10 o'clock. Hey, chat, tell Steve he can go get a snack. All right, we're going to use the Karanda Osh blender now. See already, it darkens it up quite a bit. Loretta says, go get a snack, Steve. See, with the blender pencil, too, it's looking a lot more yellow. But Loretta, I'm trying to lose weight. Cat says, Steve, you are allowed a snack, but make it a good one. Just want to, I just want to get ice cream. That's, that's, okay, well, you could, you could get a healthier snack if you really want one. I mean, if you're feeling that ice cream's not a choice for you. I think I'm going to have to go over this, this with white chat. This is turning out a lot more yellow than I intended. I know, right? Ask me, me too. It, it changes the whole color of it. This is, because like I said, this is turning out way more yellow than I wanted. So, um, but I've already started, so I kind of have to finish 
<laughs> I have to finish what I'm doing here, so we're definitely gonna have to grab like our Prismacolor White. Ah, uh, Loretta says get a healthy snack. You can get some hummus. <laughs> Steve doesn't want hummus. I really just want ice cream. Steve, you can get ice cream. Not two ice cream. Hummus is good. <laughs> Celery with avocado and salsa. Yeah, look at how yellow that is now. I do not like how yellow that is. I, I like celery, and I love avocado, and I love salsa. But I don't know if I'd like celery and avocado together. Where is my white? Hang on one second, chat. I need to find my white real quick. Thanks, Sherry. Like I said, it's a little bit more um, yellow than I intended, so I'm going to find my white pencil real quick. One second. Ah. See, I need to order more Prismacolor White. Like, this is the last of my Prismacolor White. It's sad. Like, the last time I picked up some extras was the last time I'd been to Hobby Lobby, which was, <laughs> what, three months ago? It's been a long time, chat. Who's to say? I need to get some more. I have piddly little uh, bits of grandage, but all right. But now that I laid that blender pencil on top, the best thing is going to be is a wax, wax based pencil. We're going to tone this down a little bit with some white. It's the weekend. I earned ice cream. Go, Steve, go! You did earn ice cream. Big tablespoon of ice cream satisfy the craving but too much trouble to get the container out again exactly oh crumbly but it's toning down that white just a little bit hi shara So if you ever end up coloring along with this, you could skip the blender piece if you want, or maybe choose a color that doesn't have such a yellow base to it. Yeah, it's pretty vibrant. This is looking beautiful, Emily, and now thinking if I make the dress that I'm coloring right now to be apple green. Oh, awesome, Rhea. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, that white helped to tone it down a little bit. Yeah, I definitely need to uh, make a uh, dick lick order here pretty soon. I think I have at least four Prismacolor whites I want to get, and then I have some blues and greens that I need to get. Definitely some deco pinks. I don't know where I put my list. The thing of it is, though, is you get enough singles, it ends up getting close to the price that you would for like a whole tin. But it's like I don't want to buy a whole tin because I, I there are you know I don't want the whole thing. I just want some extras of the colors I already have. Yeah, it's a bit more green than I intended, and now I've really kind of grayed out this line here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my um, my cedar green. I'm going to go along that line just so that it's all similar and balanced. There we go. Still got a nice color there. In fact, you can also... Actually, you know what you could do for one of these things? If you're ever using um, something like the Prismacolor peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, he already got the ice cream. It's too late. <laughs> little, to be fair, it's a little tiny. Okay, yeah, they're little. They're little ice cream bars. 
Um, so I don't use um, the Prismacolor Blender Pencil very often because I find it too scratchy. However, um, and this works really well in the Johanna books. If you go over with a blender pencil and a white and it's too waxy, what you can do is get the Prismacolor Blender because it is so scratchy. Let's make sure it's got a nice sharp point on it. One sec. Ooh, runaway pencil. Bye, Dad. Bye, Steve. All right. Okay? Yeah, she's okay. Oh, okay, yeah, she's fine. Okay, so then let's zoom in. Brighten this up a little bit so you can see. I think it'll work with my ink. Like I said, this this technique works better in the Johanna books on here, but what you can do, since it is so scratchy, this and use it over the top of the line and it will help to scrape away some of that wax that went over your lines. I said, I haven't been super successful with this method on printed out things, but especially in the JB books, just because of how they're printed, it works really well. Hi, oh, are you sad because he shut the door? Very vocal. But it helps to scrape off some of that wax a little bit. There we go, that's better. Did we have a little bit of lag there? Interesting, wonder why that happened. Oh well. Yeah, we're a little laggy, aren't we? A little buffy? Is anybody else a little buffy? I always have my phone up to keep an eye on because it's always different what I see on my computer than what you guys see. So I always, um, yeah, have my phone up so I can make sure that it's all working well here. All right, um, let's grab a brown now. Let's grab Van Dyke Brown. Where is it? It's gonna be over here. Or do we want dark sepia? No, we're gonna grab Van Dyke and brown ochre. Okay, so Van Dyke and brown ochre are. Okay. I went 20 days with one and ended up in the ERD 100. Oh wait, what? I missed something. Oh wait, what about your migraines? Let me scroll back up. Oh, y'all making me hungry. Let's see. That's how I found my diagnosis of migraines. Oh, I saw more than stars and it hurt for weeks. My job would pop a cat. I could try to hang up all the time. Migraine headaches. Oh yeah, a locked a locked jaw, yeah. Oh, they were under control last July. I went 20 days with one, ended up in the ER, dehydrated, couldn't keep anything down. Wait, like a migraine for 20 days, April? Oof, that's rough. I've been having headaches on and off all week, and so that's why I've been less than stellar in my streaming performance, but yeah, I feel you on that one. I, I feel like we're getting closer to getting it managed, but I know a big part of it is that my regular migraine routine has been seriously interrupted by by COVID. Oh, honey, we'll open the door for you in a minute. Oh, Michelle, thank you. Can we get some hypes in chat for Michelle? Exclamation point hype. Annie, you want to meow for Michelle? Go meow meow. See, now she's quiet. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. You're so sweet. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Oh my gosh, April. Like nothing was touching it. See, I tried um, when I initially was trying to figure out my headaches and stuff. Um, I did try like a mouth guard at night in case I was like grinding my teeth or something. Oh my, you're so noisy. All right, Van Dyke Brown. Yeah. Let's lighten this just a bit more. That's too dark. There we go. That's helpful. Oh, no, it's all right, Kenny. You know, honestly, I I've been used to my headaches. Like, I used to get migraines, but removing a tumor solved them. Oh, Lord, cat. Yeah, that would do it. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was really awkward, Sherry. I tried sleeping it for like a week, but I just couldn't do it anymore. It was too weird. Yeah, Steve rarely, rarely gets them, but um, my big triggers are, you know, stress, uh, muscle strain, food triggers, um, you know, any kind of sinus issues, which I think is what my headaches have been doing lately. Um, there's, there's just a lot of contributing factors. A lot of times I just... You know, try what I can, and I get tired of playing the guessing game as to, well, why do I have this headache? Most of the time, I can, um, based on where it's at, whether it's in the temples, front of my forehead, back of the neck, I can usually kind of tell what they are. And honestly, pre-COVID, I had them pretty well squared away. Um, but COVID pretty well interrupted my regular routine. Because a big thing that helped a lot is that I'd go to the chiropractor and get adjusted um and usually i'd get like a half hour oh, no um actually i'm gonna try this see if i can screw it. um i'd go and get a half hour massage and then i'd get adjusted and usually the massage um focused on my upper shoulders and stuff and uh that usually that usually took care of it um that between i also take it started taking a magnesium supplement which helped a lot um, but ever since COVID hit, um, my chiropractor is, um, she's dealing with some medical stuff and it made her high risk. So they weren't even seeing patients for, you know, a little bit until more, you know, guidelines were laid down and whatnot. But I went to go see her the other day, finally, but even still the waiting room was just way too crowded for what I'm comfortable with, considering how things are in Texas right now. And apparently they had had a lady in their office like three weeks previously that like ended up dying from it and or from COVID. And I was just like, I can't, I can't have peace of mind and go and get this done right now. So anyway, the point is, is I haven't been getting the regular adjustments and muscle work done that I had before. So I know that's a big part of it. But also post tonsillectomy, my sinuses are still trying to figure things out. So there, there's a number of factors in, in play here. So it's just a matter of trying to kind of find out what a good balance for everything is. Yeah, doctor says MS can cause them. I still get them occasional, but with jaw being unhinged, that can cause it too. Oh yeah, for sure. I had ocular migraines for years without headaches, then began getting headaches with auras a lot, then my stroke and none since knock on wood, or since then knock on wood. Oh yeah, that would do it. Oh my gosh, Kenny, you did? Dang. I joined the Canadian self-help group while in the university. Would have been would have one half the week. They helped me find out my triggers. 20 years of no bacon, chocolate, or fluorescent lights. I didn't think about the fluorescent lights. Yeah, Patty, actually, I did too. I joined um, some migraine groups. Um, I'm using burnt ochre now. Uh, I joined some migraine groups on uh, Facebook, and I spent some time there. You know, I didn't post a whole lot. I was just kind of reading, kind of taking in what everybody said, and that's how I discovered um, the magnesium. It's nothing any of my doctors had ever suggested to me. It was something so simple, you know, just like a magnesium supplement. Turns out a lot of women are actually magnesium deficient. I had no idea. So I started taking it and between that and um, the massage and adjustment, it helped significantly. Because I mean, I would even gone so far as to try like acupuncture for it, which didn't really work. <laughs> um, gosh, that's turning out a lot more orange than I'd like. What do I want to do about that? Hmm, let's grab olive green. Uh, let's see. My dad used to threaten me with giving me an adjustment, Deborah. <laughs> also carry Mentos and water with me everywhere. Chewing the Mentos helps with the hit of sugar. Oh, I didn't even think about it. I live vicariously through other people's pets. <laughs> Sinuses will take a bit. Yeah, that's what I'm realizing, April. Because like I said, they took my adenoids too. And so I think it's just trying to refigure everything out, trying to balance it. Lessent lights and bright sunlight give me migraines. Chocolate is a trigger for a lot of my friends with migraine issues. Yes. Sugar. Oh, thanks, Sherry. Sugar in general for me is a huge trigger, which is why I'd love to have ice cream with Steve. But um, sometimes if I've been having like, uh, we're using olive green now because I want to tone down that kind of bright orange. Um, if I'm having, you know, a good week, I can go ahead and cheat and have some. Um, but lately, mostly since post-surgery, uh, I've had to be real careful about my triggers. So, um, sugar is a big one. Not having enough water. Um, stress 
for sure is a major factor. Um, so it's when I have exhausted all of my usual avenues that I call my doctor and be like, look, I've done this, 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 and this, and this isn't working. And so then that's when we figure out something new. Oh, most definitely, Shara. Most definitely. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, and I apologize for the men in the room, but, you know, around that certain time of the month, uh, we can get a lot of headaches because hormonal levels play a lot in that. Man, when I was pregnant, I can't even begin to tell you how many migraines and headaches I had. And the thing that's worse when you're pregnant is you can't take anything more than Tylenol. So, I mean, I would have headaches for like three days because Tylenol wouldn't touch it. You know what I mean? But that was when I was, that was when I was pregnant. The hormones solved the issue. Maybe I should do that. I'm not planning on having any more kids. <laughs> Annie, what you doing? Hey, you want to say hi? Come here. What are you doing? Come here. Oh, big girl. You're getting so big. Yes, you are. Here we go. You sniffing my paper? Hmm? Here, wait, wait, wait. Let's turn this. Hang on. switch here. Here we go. There she is. There she is. No, are you not feeling it? Oh, okay. She's not feeling it. She's like, I'm done, mom. I'm done. <laughs> ah, she moved the camera. It's all blurry now. As long as she doesn't hop up on my tower. That's what she did when she was a kitten. We tried having a cat cam and then she, uh, turn off my computer so true about the time of the month i had a few headaches since going through and has the hot flashes though yikes yeah my mom and mother-in-law have told me about going through it and it's pretty unpleasant kitty yes that's annie so that was the kitten that we got you know quite a quite a while ago and i gotta tell you it's hilarious she loves the kids way more than she likes us and I think it's just because she used to spending so much time around like our youngest will pick her up and just tote her everywhere but you have to hold her a certain way like our youngest will hold up and he'll put his arm in front of her back legs and then you know his other arm behind her front legs and he'll carry her like that with like her belly kind of hanging in the middle if you try to pick her up any other way she doesn't like it but at night after the kids go to bed she will go and sit by their door and meow so we'll go and open the door and she'll go in she'll meow go over she'll because they have bunk beds and so she'll go up the stairs check out the oldest kid go down the stairs, check out the youngest kid, lay in the room for a little bit, and then leave. Like, she wants to go in there and just check on them and make sure they're okay. I went into instant menopause right after my stroke and was only 44, so I was still having range and then broke. Oh, man. That's rough. Oh, Rhea, thank you. Can we get some hypes in chat for Rhea? Exclamation point hype, or you can use the emotes. Thank you, Rhea. You are so sweet. Why can't I type? <laughs> Why can't I type? Hype. Thank you so much, Rhea. Okay, let's see. All right, dark sepia here. I'm going to fill in these little holes here. Thank you so much. You guys are all so sweet. Like, I know that I'm doing the streaming at all, but I, I say this after every stream. Really, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. Or if I did... It wouldn't be nearly as fun. So I appreciate each and every one of you hanging out with me. I know I usually do night streams, so not everybody can come to the lives, but I know a lot of people watch them back, and it's so appreciative, especially when I have, you know, months like the last couple of months where the streaming hasn't been as regular just because of, you know, my health stuff and everything. But when I am here, you guys are here, and we hang out, and we chat, and, you know, I have... I try to have like coffee, like coffee meetups with, you know, my IRL friends and stuff, but you know, it's all over Zoom and everything and socially things have dwindled just because of this whole, you know, can't go see friends, they can't come see us. And so these nights when I get to stream and hang out with you all and chat about, you know, as much as I love all my friends, you guys are the people I have my art in common with and I absolutely, yeah absolutely appreciate and just love having this time to be able to come and chat with all of you. Oh, awesome, Rhea. Buffy keeps stopping by my face. Yeah, it was a little buffier earlier. I have it on ultra low latency though, but it's also the weekend. 
So that could also be it. Right, Kenny? No, she really is. Like we, we've, you know, we've held her and she lets us pet her and everything. But yeah, she loves the kids so much more than us. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. But we've all got our cats, you know. Uh, Paul, he's, he's kind of our snuggler and, and, you know, if ever a bug gets in the house, he catches it real quick. But he also, um, is terrified of thunder. We've had a lot of storms lately. So I got him a thunder shirt. And, uh, so that has helped him a bit. I'm going to use a cedar green now. I want to darken this a bit. Um, and so that's helped, but the cats all definitely play, you know, have their, have their roles a little bit, um, you know, our, our older cat, she loves to, to snuggle on, you know, if anybody's in the bed, she's automatically right next to them. So I had a good, you know, snuggle buddy while I, while I convalesced and, you know, Paul and Annie, they play together. So, you know, we've got a good little, a good little trio going on for sure. I don't know. Does anybody else's pets deal with anxiety for... For, like the storm and so most of the time you know he's a cat so we'll let him go and hide but I have never had a pet before that is so stressed out by the storms the thunder shirt like I said helps he he calms and stuff and kind of lays around but I know like the trend these days especially like for dogs is like that CBD oil but I don't know how that is for cats and I am not familiar with it enough to be comfortable to give it to my cat you know I always feel bad seeing him so stressed out. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch. I have Black Kitty 2 in one of my segments that's your... Oh, awesome, Sherry. Oh, she was laying next to you. Oh my gosh, cat. Holy cow. I am so sorry you had to go through that. I don't have a cat, but just bought a cat pencil holder and cat pillow. I like it, Rhea. I like it. Well, I think the getting rid of migraines was a uh, was a positive side effect of it. <laughs> Let's see. A cat headband, which I usually use while coloring. Nice. Oh, how funny, Sherry. Riggs is terrified of thunder. Yeah, see, fireworks doesn't seem to bother him, but my goodness, thunderstorms just, yeah. I don't know. It's something else. My cat Tom's a scaredy cat and will hide if it thunders too loud or if people come by. Oh. Well, I'm liking how this has turned out. Like I said, I hadn't planned any coloring in it. I kind of had in my mind how the colors could lay out when I was drawing it, but I hadn't thought of anything too specific. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do the brim in the same colors. Smoothing out some of this texture here. And then there's obviously all the little bits and bobs in the hat and the floral stuff behind it. That's the story I was not telling you before your surgery. I appreciate that, cat. I appreciate that. My cat is total opposite. He wants to watch the storm. If he hides, you know it's bad. Should be closet with him. He did that once and tornado sirens went off. Oh my gosh. See, maybe I should get rid of mine. I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty, pretty burnt on the headaches. If I could just not have to worry about them at all anymore, that would be fantastic. But see, none of my other si like, I have two other sisters, I have a brother, my mom, like, nobody in my family has to deal with headaches the way that I do, and I just don't get it. You know, I started getting them a lot when I was, like, I'm just using the blender pencil right now, just kind of smoothing things out. When I was uh, 18, I'd have to call into work a lot, and then I discovered Excedrin migraine, thank God, you know, and then over years, that didn't really work anymore. But, um, but yeah seem to be the only one in my family that has such issues with sugar and headaches and triggers and whatnot. Not fair. Exactly, cat. Exactly. See, I have band practice in my living room where my dog's kennel tables are now, so they are bomb-proof. Oh, goodness. All three of my dogs freak out with fireworks or thunder. Two tiny ones and our big boy all try to get under my desk as close to me as possible. They are 11, 12, and 13. Aw. Greg's safe place is mommy's bed and mommy petting them. Yeah, exactly. So... Paul will hide in a couple of places. He likes to go under the kids' bed. If he can't get there, he likes to hide under our blankets on our bed, which we've kind of, you know, we just change the sheets frequently because he doesn't go under the sheets. He just goes under the top blanket. And so, you know, we'll, if he's been under there a few times, we'll go ahead and then make a sheet change. But um, we don't mind. It makes him, you know, feel safe. And then um, 
oddly enough, and I hate it when he does this, he will hide between the wall and the tower of my computer. But the problem is he's a cord chewer. Um, and so, uh, can't have him back there because I can't trust him to not chew my computer cords. So I feel bad because he feels so snug and warm and safe there, but I just can't trust him with all my cords. Cannot have him chewing through my computer like a rabbit. I had a rabbit once. That rabbit ate everything. Oh my lord, that rabbit went out to live on my parents' farm. Not like I sent the rabbit to the farm. I legitimately sent the rabbit to the farm. Uh, just because my apartment with the many, many cords was not a good place for it. And so they built him a little, his own little hutch and little run area and everything. He was already an elderly rabbit when I got him, but he lived out the rest of his years on a big open farm. It was a much better place than my two bedroom apartment at the time. <laughs> Let's see. Can't let my cat sleep in my room at night with me. Tom and Angel are huge kitties and they step on sensitive places and nerve endings that are ouchies. Ah, uh, yeah, I get that. Mine mostly just pin my legs to the ground. <laughs> I had to have an early surgery like yours. Thankfully, she was okay and she told me the early minute was awful. Ooh, yeah, I can imagine. Come on to the seas. Riggs is normally not allowed in my bed. Yeah, I don't know. We have a small place and our bedroom is kind of the safe area away from the kids. You know, there's a lot of chaos sometimes with the children and the cats need a quiet place to go where the children won't bother them. So that's why they get the bedroom. We just, you know, wash blankets and sheets and stuff pretty frequently. My two tiny dogs sleep in my bed under the sheets. We all have... <laughs> oh gosh, Sarah. Oh gosh, I tell you, we had a flea instance here just briefly thank god it was so quick i know i'm sort of just chatting now but i don't really want to start on a new section so i'm probably gonna be done but for for now I, I enjoy chatting with you all um i don't know maybe we could do that patch i did want to do a blue on that patch let me grab let's grab night green um but in the springtime we always have stray kittens and thankfully this year we were able to catch the mama cat and the kittens well i showed you guys the kittens before but anyway, what I didn't realize is that uh, all those kittens had fleas and it somehow I must have, it, it, they, it must have tracked in on me. Anyway, it brought them in and our cats got the fleas. Thankfully, I discovered them early, the fleas early. And so we got all the cats treated uh, and I we cleaned absolutely everything. We washed all blankets, all pillows, all stuffies. I got a steam cleaner. I steamed the furniture. I shampooed the carpet multiple, multiple times. And I put out, you can, you can do this kind of test thing where you put a pan of um, soapy water out underneath a nightlight. And if you have fleas, then you'll see, it's not like a flea extermination kind of thing that'll work, but if you have fleas, you'll be able to see because they'll jump in there. Anyway, they weren't in there anymore. So thankfully we were able to be done and over with the fleas in like uh, a week total maybe. We had the kit, we had the cats all separated in a room with their treatment for probably about three or four days so they weren't in the main part of the house so it would give me time to clean and deep clean and steam like everything so let's see uh i missed something let me scroll back up real quick we went hormone therapy for three months slowly lowering the dose since i've not had issues oh awesome cat how are the Leo Rembrandts? I'm thinking of getting a sec. Deborah, I love them. They've been so much fun. They layer really nicely and they let a lot of pigment. You don't have to press too hard. I think that Tom and Angel may have a bit of Maine Coon and then Tom's face is like a Maine Coon but without all the long fur. Oh, nice. Can jump off into your yard and then infestation. Well, thankfully we live on a second story so that's not too much of an issue. I really think it was because I was handling the kittens and there must have been one on my clothes or something when I came back upstairs. So, But thankfully it was short-lived and we got it all taken care of like ASAP. Uh, let's see. Does Accenture migraine work any better than regular ibuprofen? Okay, so here's the difference. I'm going to put down my pencil to, to describe this real quick. Okay, so ibuprofen, and let me preface this with I am not a doctor. Do not take my medical advice. Talk to your doctor. Here is my knowledge about these medicines. Ibuprofen and NSAID are both, or sorry, ibuprofen and aspirin are both NSAIDs. They also um, help to, not help, but one of the things that they do is they thin the blood a little bit, which can help to um, lessen, like, you know, that kind of throbbing feeling that you get when you've got a headache. It kind of lessens that a little bit. It works really well to, um, to get rid of a headache. It does. Um, 
However, things like after surgery, they didn't want me to take any aspirin because it increases the risk of bleeding after surgery, so I had to take ibuprofen instead. The difference between aspirin and ibuprofen versus any of the excedrins, there's two excedrins. There's excedrin migraine and there's excedrin tension headache. Excedrin migraine has aspirin, Tylenol, and caffeine in it. It has all three of them, which are absolutely great in getting rid of a headache, which is why it works. Um, excedrin tension headache has Tylenol and caffeine. It does not have the NSAID. So a lot of times if you want something that maybe isn't as strong, you can go with tension headache because sometimes just a little bit of caffeine will help to knock out that headache. Um, but uh, for me, for instance, I can't take two of those. Usually they say, hey, take two with whatever. It's too much caffeine for me. It makes me too jittery. So normally I'll just take one with caffeine. Um, so yes, the difference is Excedra migraine has the three that can knock it out. The um, anti-inflammatory, yes, thank you, Shara. That was what I was looking for. Um, but uh, 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 yeah, so it has the aspirin, the Tylenol, and the caffeine. Great things for getting rid of just a standard headache. And then if you don't want to do the aspirin or you can't have the aspirin, uh, Excedrin tension headache is great because it has Tylenol and caffeine. Anyway, sorry. Those are those. I, I know probably way too much about those medicines. I have my little combination of medicines that I take that work pretty well for it. But let's see. Hi, Michaela. Uh, let's see. Yes, Lyra's can be bought open stock. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, oh, thanks, Patricia. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. I wrote, yeah, an anti-inflammatory. That was the word I was looking for. Thank you, Shara. Uh, at my old house, I had a massive flea problem. Fought them for 16 years. I lived there, so before I moved, I threat or oh, I treated the yard here and washed everything before it came into the house. Oh yeah, totally. My spouse used to drink a can of Coke when he had sinus headache. Yeah, so the caffeine and the Coke will do it, but for if your if your headaches are triggered by sugar, it's not necessarily good. And you can't take Excedrin. Is it uh, because of the caffeine or is it because of the aspirin? Hard cider works too. There you go, Bonnie. Shapiro Farbins, I love those. Yes, I love Shapiro Farbins. Did you take Neurotriptan hydrochloride? It's the only thing that killed my migraines. Um, I have tried triptans before, uh, amitriptyline, nortriptyline, but um, amitriptyline made me feel super exhausted the next day and nortriptyline uh, made my heart race too much. Oh, nice, Sherry. I debated about using Arteza for this. Also, um, another migraine one that a lot of doctors um, end up recommending is Imitrix, but that one made me feel like I had the flu, so that was also a no-go. Again, I'm prefacing this as, I am not a doctor. These are things and my experience with them. <laughs> makes you itch and makes your stomach sick at my stomach, which is strange. The sick to your stomach one, though, isn't strange because the NSAIDs can be kind of hard on your stomach. That's why I had to stop taking ibuprofen. And even as it is, if I take anything with aspirin, I need to make sure um, not to take it on an empty stomach. Last time I was on, I just had my reconstruction surgery on both feet. I was still in a boot and I get to walk with a walker. Nice, Michaela. All right, so I am going to use Night Green now, number 55. Have you tried Botox? My brother has injections in his head and helps, but doesn't completely kill the headaches. I have heard of that, Teresa, um, but it's not something my doctor has offered for exploring yet. Um, I do have a friend, though, that actually just got that done yesterday for her headaches. NSAID? Yeah, I've just always said NSAID. I mean, could be that. I don't know. I think it just depends. Ibuprofen doesn't bother me as long as I don't take it too often. Yeah, see, and that's the problem is I was taking it too often because I had was having the headache at the time. So, because um, the problem also is if you take too much ibuprofen, um, they can actually in turn end up causing the headaches uh, by being rebound headaches. So, you know, kind of, you just can't win. Yes, definitely, Shara, definitely. So. Pencil set collector, or maybe hoarder is a... Nope, it's collector. Hoarder is not a term in this uh, in our community. <laughs> <Deborah>. <laughs> yes, pencil collector. It's called full set syndrome, and we love it. We treat the fleas by treating the dogs. Fleas on any other surface would bite the bite them as they prefer biting them, and then they die. Yes, exactly, Patty. Because the way our vet described it is that pets themselves are like, like a like a beacon of light to the fleas like because their body temperature is so much hotter they will automatically go to them and so then if they're treated then it should die off for us the reason i steam cleaned and washed everything too was because if there were any flea eggs you know they'd hatch a few weeks later thankfully 
either it wasn't that bad and I caught it super early or the steam cleaning really did its trick and um, yeah, it, it didn't become an issue, thank God. I was so relieved because this is all in like when COVID went down, I was like, I don't need this. <laughs> Doesn't have wrinkles either. They're and he's older than I am. Oh, <laughs> I don't do a leave too often, but it's definitely a leave is right up there with like a muscle relaxers. I want to say like naproxen. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, that would do it. Cat that would do it. Dr. Hosen, gabapentin, ibuprofen, oxycodone, surgery three times a day on all three. Dang, Michaela. Yeah, the after the surgery, they had prescribed me some pretty strong stuff, but it was just, yeah, it was too much. I couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. You know, I, I know you're supposed to take the stronger stuff, but I definitely stopped taking it as soon as I could. Ibuprofen, good lord, finger issues. <laughs> Yeah, NSA, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, Viridian now is what I'm using. It's kind of greenish, but it's lighter than the night green. Yeah, I really like these colors. Well, and with only 72 pencils too, sometimes larger sets can be a little overwhelming. Choose your colors from. I like them, don't get me wrong, but that's sometimes why I default to my Ergosoft too, because Ergosoft, there's only 36, and I like choosing. Oh, you can barely hear me? Okay, let me move the mic a little bit closer. I'm up in the yellow, so it should be should be pretty loud. Sometimes if I'm talking like with my head down while I'm coloring, is anybody else having a hard time hearing me? Sure, I looked around and I have the delis. I, for I forgot because I keep forgetting to order a case of them. I love them, but like you said. Wait, the delis. What are the delis, Kenny? Imatrix were great for two years then stopped. Yeah, see, that's the problem is too, is you're like, it's almost as if your body gets used to it and things just don't work as well for it anymore. But yeah, Imatrix was just too much. And you know, I took the nortriptyline for a while and I didn't realize that my heart was racing as much, but I noticed like I was having more anxiety issues and like my heart rate was up to like 110 and I was just like making oatmeal. I was like, my heart rate should not be that high, you know, for making oatmeal. And I decided to go ahead, I was just tired of taking a lot of medicines and I was going to try the magnesium anyway, so I stopped taking the nortriptyline and my heart rate went back to normal. So it wasn't until I stopped taking it that I realized that's what was causing part of the issue. I go for pain, but it made me feel loopy. I had a strange cocktail of meds, but Excedrin is one of them and it works. Yeah, Excedrin, I was so relieved when I finally found that. Normally I don't have an issue hearing you at all? Huh. I'm not sure. The volume's about the same. I have a lot of nerve damage now from all the surgeries on my feet. This was my eighth surgery in a year. If I don't take those meds, it feels like a million horns. Oh yeah, I get that, Michaela. Um, these are the delis, very similar to Polly's. Oh, you're about to post a link, solid colon. Uh, then this is Aquamarine. I'm gonna use like a uh, burgundy here for the shading on this. If you wanted to, I don't know that we will because it's smaller. You could always use like gel pen for the swirlies if you wanted to make those pop out. Mm. Oh, okay. SJ Starjoy, 72 color pencils, professional set. Oh, I don't think the link uh, posted. Sounds good, Belinda. Have a great night. Thanks for being here. Uh, well, I don't get migraines anymore, but now suffer from other chronic pain. find it takes many things to help medication, acupuncture, yoga, water, and of course, coloring. Yes. Oh, thanks, Michaela. Yeah, a big part of it for me, too, is, I mean, in the last three years, I mean, here I am being pretty open about what's going on with me. Hey, guys. Um, uh, let's see. I'm looking for wine red. One second. Hang on. Is that wine red? Yes, wine red. Hang on. Here it is. Um, a big part of it for me, too, is I think, I mean, I, I don't have uh, a whole lot of strength. And a big part of it is in the last three years, like, I have been sick way too much. Like, we had a year where I got the flu, like, three times. Um, you know, I, everybody knows I had meningitis in the fall. I mean, seriously, what are the odds of actually getting that, you know? And then with this surgery. And so I've lost a lot of weight from it. But I've also lost, um, which... 
I wasn't too upset about because I had a lot of leftover baby weight, but I'm at the point now where for my height, I really shouldn't be losing any more weight. And um, a big part of it is I don't have a whole lot of strength anymore. Like I try to pick up my son and I'm like, oh dear God. So as soon as, you know, I, I know I'm 100% from this, I wanna start doing some more exercises. So, you know, starting out slow, Steve and I did yoga for a little bit, but it was a little too intense um, for what we were doing. And so I did some research on like exercises that I can do. So like um, isometric exercises aren't super, um, what's the word? Uh, there, there's something that you can do to like kind of start out slow. So things like, um, like wall sits, not, not crunches, but like wall sits, um, uh, planks, that kind of thing. And you just hold them for a certain amount of time. So it's not about, you know, like pushing yourself to where, you know, you're just like in pain and can't handle it kind of thing. You do what you can without, you know, hurting yourself. And, you know, by that you slowly do more and more and you build up, you build up more strength. So that's my goal is I think a big part of me now is I need to get things, uh, oh God. Oh, Kenny, I'm sorry. Well, send me um, send me a, a, a DM, Kenny, with it. Because I am curious. I want to take a look at him. Um, right, Sherry. Yeah, that was me too. Last fall, I'm, I was... Yeah, I was 33 at the time. Um, yeah, it was incredibly... I mean, I, I'm not going to lie, guys. I mean, or gals, ladies, people. <laughs> Having that was... It was a, like, looking back on it now, like... I, it was mildly traumatizing. Like it terrifies me the idea of having to go back into a hospital now for, and then I think that's part of the reason why I'm so wary of catching COVID because I do not want to end up back in the hospital. That pain, like imagine the worst headache you've ever had. And it was, it was worse than that. Like I can't even just like a lot of it is fuzzy, but I remember like distinctly there was one night where it just felt like I was wearing, the best way I can describe it is like this, like a hat made out of pain, if that makes sense. Like it wrapped around my whole head and it, that was probably like one night that it was just the absolute worst. But, you know, a lot of people, I don't feel like I've had lingering effects, but a lot of people say you can have like lingering effects from experiencing something like that. But I think more than anything, mine was probably like emotional. I don't know, it was just, it was scary, I'm not gonna lie. Having meningitis is like, you're really sick. And I think I maybe downplayed it at the time, but like looking back on it, it was just like, good God, I can't believe that I went through something like that and I never want, yeah, I got that. Thank you, Kenny. I'd never want, I would not wish that on anyone. It is absolutely the worst, but you know, it's just, thank God I had good doctors and they had the sense to test for it. And cause I mean, we just thought I had like a really bad cold or something and then I like passed out and we went to the doctor and you know they diagnosed me with you know acute they thought it was just a migraine at first and it wasn't until we went to the emergency room you know but anyway 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 health stuff is always so fun and you know I'm not that old yet but as I get older I find it affects you more and more and thankfully I've got good doctors that listen to me and don't like brush me off, you know, when, when, uh, you know, I have a suggestion or I think, you know, it might be a good idea to do something, but yeah, if you can avoid it, don't get meningitis. It sucks. I don't even remember where I was going with that, but, <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me real scroll back up real quick. Uh, lost a lot of weight also because I was bedridden for six weeks. Not a great way to lose weight. Also lost a lot of muscle mass. Now I'm yes, Michaela, that's exactly me. Like I got these little you know, like these standard little five pound weights. You know, I used to hold these and these felt like nothing and I can still hold them, but I definitely feel like streaming my arm now. Like, holy crap, like this actually takes a little bit of doing. Chair yoga, if I tried really to turn some kind of crazy modern dance. Physical therapy, nice. For six days, I had lingering effects in my ears, lots of ear problems for years. I've heard that, yeah, like hearing stuff. Prescribe yoga and coloring for me as I cannot do relaxation programs or meditation that irritate you. Nice. Oh, Lord, Sherry. <laughs> well, um, who is it? Adrian, like uh, yoga with Adrian. Like she was really good, but by the end of it, I'm using the white, by the way, the Prismacolor white. By the end of it, I was just like, I was burnt and we'll probably get back to it eventually, but I, I'm just not strong enough to do a lot of it. And so I want to get to that point where 
you know, get my health under control. And then I want to start building some strength up. So like my ideal world, you know, I, my sleep schedule is, you know, all fixed and not all crazy and everything. And I'm eating well. And cause I think that could help, you know, headaches and stuff in the long run is if I'm eating well, sleeping well, getting up, exercising, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, it's one thing to say, this is what I want to do. And it's another thing to actually, you know, do it. <laughs> I'm searching for a larger than normal yoga mat that's squishy to slowly get back into it. I've tried the cherry. It's just not the same. I just have to avoid certain poses. Yeah, I had one of those when I was in college because we did yoga in like a gym and the thinner ones, my knees always hurt. So I got one of the real squishy ones. They were like half an inch thick, an inch thick, whatever. It was this purple one. So you squish it down and then it foams up a little bit. I don't know that I've seen them much larger. I know they, they probably have them, but yeah. Uh, okay, let's grab wine red. Zoom in a tad here. There we go. I'm going to smooth out this wine red when we're done. I just want to get some contrasty. Let's see. Yoga with Cassandra. Oh, okay, I'll have to check her out. During that six weeks, I went through a huge color by numbers phase. I colored a ton of pages a day because it was so mindless. Oh, I totally get that. The single mom of three, un one under a year, and drove myself to the ER, and they did the lumbar puncture and then admitted me. It was crazy. Yeah, so um, we had a friend come and stay with the kids. Steve drove me to the ER. And they ran all the tests that, you know, had already been run. And when they got it back and they're like, look, we've checked everything else. We're not entirely sure. He's just like, before you go, though, I want to go ahead and do a lumbar puncture. Puncture. Oh, my gosh. It took them three tries to get that. Yeah. Lumbar puncture where it's not working is so much fun. Um, anyway, they finally got it and they ran the test and they came back. And by this time, I had sent Steve home to be with the kids because when we went, it was like the middle of the night. So my friend at the time, thank God she was available. She came and stayed with the kids. It was like midnight when we went to the ER and they did the test. And I was just like, wait, what? Because he came back. He's like, it's meningitis. I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, who gets meningitis? I don't even know. Uh, let's see. Uh, hi Joanna can't put pressure on my right or left elbow joint or be tilted too far due to vertigo oh no what happened I'm late oh Joanna we're just kind of discussing headaches and health and whatnot in general and uh what the meningitis was like when I went last fall does it hurt as much as they say it does oh my gosh yes Sherry it does and it's scary too because I mean it's going into your spine they're going into the muscle in between um Mm, what's it called? I guess the bones on your spine, however it's called. I'm probably using the wrong terms for it. But um, yeah, it's nerve wracking too, because if they do it wrong, after you're done with the meningitis, you can have um, issues with the lumbar site where you get these excruciating migraines when you lay down. And that's a sign that something's wrong. Thankfully, that wasn't an issue, but itself was painful, especially because they had to do it three times. So I was just like, oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sherry, you sound like me. I drove myself to the hospital while I was having a stroke. They freaked out. Oh my gosh, cat. Yeah, understandable. What's the gray looking pen you just used? Oh, this is a pencil extender Oof. that I have, uh, the last little tip of my Karanda Ash, uh, blender in. Um, they have the Karanda Ash blender pencils that's actually like in the pencil now, but these ones, the sticks, I find they break less often if they have some support in the pencil extender. Yes, I'm I'm fine now, Joanna. Uh, we were talking about like lasting effects and, and everything because earlier I was saying um, with the tonsillectomy, my sinuses are trying to like refigure out how to work and it just kind of moved on to that spinal cord. Yeah, thanks, Joanna. <laughs> yeah, meningitis when you were five. Oh, Allie, that's so scary. I got injections there sometimes and it's not too bad. Yeah, well, the way that it works is it's a larger needle. It has to be larger because um, they're taking a sample of your spinal fluid. It's kind of like when they give you a um, 
epidural when you're pregnant, it has to be larger because it goes in and then what they do is they thread a tube. It's a hollow needle and they thread the tube into your spine so that you can get the medicine for the epidural. So it's a little bit larger. Eight meningitis when he was 18 months old. Oh, baby. God, I was in my 30s and it was hard. I, oh, you're a brave mother, Michaela. Yes, we're swapping ouchy stories. Yes, exactly. Everyone loves a good ouchy story. I heard those who had viral meningitis once are more susceptible to get it again. So it's so different than bacterial meningitis. Yeah, meningitis feels like your head is being... Yes, exactly, Cher. But I actually read the opposite, that just because you've had it once doesn't necessarily mean you're more likely to get it again. Because if I understood it correctly when the doctors explained it to me, it starts out like you have a cold or a flu. And then what happens is somehow the virus that you have infects your spinal fluid and so it's like this fluke freak thing and it just it's it just happened to happen so it's not like it's not like my kids were being around my kids made it so they might have been likely to catch the meningitis they couldn't catch the meningitis if they caught anything it would have been like the cold or the flu that I started out with something viral so yeah, I heard that it, it that where I'm not any more likely to to get it again. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, you had an uh, epidural with one of your kids. I had them with both of the kids. I used a yoga mat for cons for a concert to muffle when a student you teach down crash symbols. So oh, after school group ended up taking it. Oh, how funny. Spinal tap. Yeah, not a fun time at all, Deborah. Oh, nice quarter inch thick. Hi, Nick and Tina. We used to have to get my goddaughter spine needles every month. It's brutal. Oh, yeah, it's not fun. The worst part is, is you have to hold so still, like it's ridiculous. Wait, did the music turn off? It did. There we go. Uh, oh, poor buddy. Oh, Michaela, that must have just been a heart wrenching. Oh, 18 months. That's hard. It's a regular illness that goes to your spine. My kids have been sick with a cold, and then they got sick and thought it was a cold, and then whammy. Yep. It's exactly what it is. It's regular illness and got to your spine. Yeah, a little bit, Cherry. It's just different because they don't leave a tube in your back afterwards. They're just drawing some of the fluid. That's all. Okay, let's see. What time is it? Oh my gosh, it's 11. It's 11. And look at all of you here. You guys are so amazing. I should probably go ahead and go though and let my uh, voice rest a little bit. Um, we're gonna be, oh yeah, Joanna, that's hard. We're gonna be live again um, on Monday. Let's zoom out here. We're gonna be live again on Monday and we'll work on this page some more. We'll do the brim, we'll do this. We'll probably work on this stuff in the back last because I wanna finish the hat first. So um, if you want to catch up and color along with this, this is going, not going to, it is, it's in my Etsy store. So you can type exclamation point Etsy um, and you can find the link for this in the description below. Also, if you're watching this back, um, like I said, all those pages that I made for uh, the Victorian Colorathon, those are up in my Etsy as well. So feel free to, um, what time Monday? It'll be 8.30, um, 8.30 p.m. Uh, Central Time. So same time, same place, kind of dealio. Oh yeah, Joanna, you're in my time zone. So yeah, uh, 8.30. Um, but yeah, so we'll be live again. If anything changes, I'll let you guys know. Um, like I said, because my sinuses are still giving me issues. But I think I think we've got a good kind of regimen going here. Um, oh yeah, so yeah, we'll, we'll continue on the hat. And then next weekend will be the Victorian Colors. In the meantime, Kat, thank you, thank you, thank you for the wonderful gifts and the super chats. You are so amazing. You, you are just absolutely love you. Michelle, thank you so much for your $5 super chat. That is also amazing. And Rhea, thank you for your super chat as well. Seriously, guys, I have so much fun hanging out with you, chatting with you and just, you know, and really just hanging out. I mean, who needs a therapist when I have you guys to talk to? Seriously. Like you guys, you guys are like my, my twice weekly session. <laughs> You know, my hope eventually is to get back to three days a week, but um, right now the goal is set to two days a week as, you know, I'm still kind of figuring things out, but this is, this is good. I enjoy my time with you and it's so much fun. And um, 
yeah, I can't wait to see you guys again. Okay, so keep an eye on social media. If anything changes, I will let you know. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all of that. So everyone have a great night. And um, yeah, I will see you on Monday. And if there's any streams this weekend, I might see you in some of those. But otherwise, everyone, please stay healthy. Stay safe. I love you all. And I will see you on Monday. All right. Bye.